Good morning, dear online participants, dear ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning and a very warm welcome from Brussels to Sofia. Dobro utro. My name is Ula Houdina. I'm Deputy Head of Unit for Access to Finance in Commission Department for Industry, Internal Market, Entrepreneurship and SMEs. And I will be your moderator today. As we have a very packed morning with excellent speakers who will present to you the following items, I suggest we really start now. First, you will hear about the InvestEU Fund and all the windows. You will hear about the InvestEU Advisory Hub and InvestEU Portal. Second, you will also hear about the European Investment Fund and its debt and equity products, and also in more details about the InvestEU call for expression of interest for financial intermediaries, which was published earlier this year in March. Third, we will touch upon funding opportunities from the European Innovation Council for startups and SMEs to develop and scale up game-changing innovations. And last but not least, we will share with you insights how the single market program and the Enterprise Europe Network can help the businesses in Bulgaria. When we were actually planning this online event in very late 2021, meaning last December, we planned it as online events because we were still amidst COVID wave in order to be sure that we would be able to be with you at least online. But nonetheless, we will try to make this online event, this webinar, as interactive as possible and give you an ample op of opportunities to connect with us, to ask questions and to be as active as the speakers. So, dear participants, we will try to make some of your questions to squeeze into the morning sessions. For this, we will be using Slido a tool you might already be familiar with, and you can access Slido here on the left screen, if you can see it now, or you can use your smartphone on the browser of your computer, or simply go to slido.com, or quickly scan this QR code that you see on the screen, and enter the hashtag EUFinanceDay underscore Bulgaria. When you're in the Slido app, then you can also vote which questions that you will see on the screen you consider as important so we can then prioritize them accordingly and you do this by clicking on thumbs up next to the questions that you will see displayed additionally if we will not squeeze in the question immediately after the presentation there, in the end, as you saw on the program, there will be four parallel breakout sessions from 12.45 until 1.15. And there you will be able to directly approach the experts with all your questions. So in case we cannot take your question in the morning session, don't worry. We will take the questions during the question and answer session on 12.45. And you will be able to join those question and answer sessions of your choice by clicking on one of the links displayed at the end of the agenda, which you can find at the event website. And you also got the, uh, the links uh, earlier this morning via email, or you will be able to publish, to, to click on them on the slider. Not to forget, we are providing simultaneous interpretation from Bulgarian to English and from English to Bulgarian throughout the whole event. And we would like to thank you already now for the precious help of interpreters uh, throughout the event. And when you connected to the event this morning, you would have been given the choice of the languages you prefer to follow during the live stream. But there is also a toolbar at the bottom of the video window here that you see in front of you, where you can also select the language you prefer. Not to forget to mention, our webinar is recorded and we will make the recording available a couple of days after the event. And also the presentations will be available at the event website. Finally, but very importantly, after the event, we will be sending you a short survey via email that we would really warmly invite you to complete. This will help us to improve any future events that we will do, and we still have some finance days to go. So thank you in advance for participating in the survey. Now, uh, after all this practical information and housekeeping, we are very much looking to start with the introductory speakers and then with the first sessions. 
So please welcome my director, Die Merete Clausen, Director for Investment, the European Commission Director General for Inter Internal Market Industry Entrepreneurship and SMEs. So the honor stage is yours. Thank you, Merete. Thank you, Ula, and good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to open the EU Finance Days here in Bulgaria. Uh, as Hilde, as uh, Ula said, I'm a uh, director of investment in uh, the European Commission. And investing right is really a main priority for all of us. We are experiencing that unprecedented levels of funding are available from public sources and also from the EU budget to bolster our economies and to counter the economic impacts of the COVID pandemic outbreak and also now of the war in Ukraine. And we have other challenges. On top of all that, we are struggling with high and volatile energy prices and high inflation. And subsidies or grants are needed to tackle the economic fallout of these challenges. But we also need investment and we need better investment with public sources alongside private. You may have heard about the recovery plan for Europe and the next generation EU, which dedicates 800 billion euros to finance the needs of the EU member states for investment and reforms through grants and loans. And today we will tell you more about the InvestEU program, which is our flagship program, or our flagship investment tool, which has also benefited from funding through the recovery plan and through the next generation EU. I'll say something more about its priorities, but fundamentally what this tool does is to channel all these funds to financial partners, to banks and other financial institutions who are in the member states and who are your habitual financial, financial partners and are close to you where you are. This event is part of a series of online meetings which the Commission organizes this year in order to raise awareness for the EU support programs and also to support the InvestEU implementation. So we're here today to tell you more about the InvestEU program and how it can benefit Bulgaria specifically. We are very pleased that the interest from Bulgarian stakeholders in this initiative is very high. We've received over 300 registration requests and we are very happy to have you all with us here today. And we really hope you will make use of the Commission experts and the other experts who are here today to tell you how to apply for support to, our, to your companies and to your projects. InvestEU alone is expected to mobilize more than 372 billion euros in public and private resources in the coming years. It will finance investments in line with the EU's policy priorities. And what are these priorities? Well, it's the Repower EU, which is our plan on how to overcome the current energy prices, uh, the energy price and uh, supply crisis. It's also the European Green Deal, which is our plan to turn around climate change and make the Europe make Europe a CO2 neutral continent. It's Europe Europe's digital decade. It's our SME strategy and much more. And what it will do is that it will help de-risk investments and then attract other public and private resources to these priorities. And as I said, we are running the program with a number of implementing partners. You will hear also from some of them today. And we have signed the first agreements with our main implementing partner, the European Investment Bank and the European Investment Fund. And already now concrete calls for expression of interests for InvestEU products which can be debt products and equity products. Uh, these concrete calls have already been published by the EIF, and we are happy to hear that several Bulgarian financial institutions have already applied for a considerable number of products. On top of that, we have discussions with 18 other implementing partners, including the Bulgarian Development Bank, uh, they are ongoing and the Commission has already started concluding guarantee agreements with other implementing partners as well. So these are the partners you will be able to turn to and engage with to apply for funding for your projects. And today we'll have information for you about other EU funding programs too. 
if you are a very early stage company with highly innovative breakthrough ideas, you may get help to develop and to scale up through the European Innovation Council Accelerator. You'll hear more about that from the experts from our executive agency today. You will also hear about the single market program, which has a specific pillar supporting the competitiveness, capacity building and sustainability of SMEs. So wherever your need is, there should be something interesting for you here today. And you, I really hope that you will make use of the opportunity to ask questions and get answers from the experts. After all, they're here for you. I wish you all a very informative and interesting session. Thank you, Merete. Our next introductory speaker is Svetan Kiliano, acting head of the European Commission representation in Sofia. He has been appointed to this function since September 2019, but already before and in parallel, he has been uh, analyzing and following economic and financial developments in Bulgaria. Svetan, online stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ulla. Um... Скъпи колеги, уважаеми участници, добро утро. <към> Радвам се, че сте избрали да сте тук, а не пред телевизорите да следите откриването. Uh, colleagues, uh, I'm uh, very glad that we are together uh, on the day uh, when the Bulgarian Parliament is being opened. According to uh, most analyzers, the next 12 months will be uh, quite hard uh, for both um, the Bulgarian economy and the world economy. Uh, in, this, in these uh, points in time, in these hardships, uh, uh, access to finance, uh, financing is limited and European financing uh, becomes even more relevant uh, in uh, such difficult times and becomes more sought after by companies. I believe uh, that today you will hear very in, in, important and interesting information. And as you will hear, the European Commission and the European structures have a lot to offer. The, uh, it was mentioned that uh, the recovery plan uh, which uh, has allocated over 11 billion levs um, for Bulgaria, which will um, ultimately reach the Bulgarian businesses. And it's important to mention two more components uh, which we should have in mind, especially in an environment of increasing demand for financing and uh, higher yeah. interest rates. Uh, the first uh, option is the possibility to uh, have loans and 9 billion uh, levs um, is available for Bulgaria. This is a serious financial resource. Um, and through the budget, it can reach uh, the Bulgarian companies. And secondly, the second option is the uh, Just Transition Fund, which um, is uh, uh, targeting the decarbonization regions. Um, 2.5 billion um, are available there to help the businesses and the people to have this transition run s smoothly. This transition is underway anyway, um, and it will be completed in the uh, next couple of years, but th uh, this serious financial resource will help us get there faster and um, easier. Uh, thank you very much, and I wish you a very helpful and very uh, informative um, and productive day. Done. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Theodor Radno. He is head of the European Investment Bank Group office in Bulgaria. He has been appointed there in March 2021, and he has structured finance uh, experience from over eight years before working for the European Investment Fund. Theodore, please. Thank you, Ula. Thank you. Uh, distinguished colleagues and guests, I'm very glad to be able to uh, address you at this interesting and meaningful event and share with you the activity of the European Investment Bank in Bulgaria, an activity which has a long history uh, since the 90s um, and um, contracting um, over 6 billion euro. Uh, 
the support um, that the European Investment Group in Bulgaria, uh, Banking Group in Bulgaria, makes it uh, rank first, uh, third um, among the countries of the EU, uh, showing how active we've been. Let me give you some uh, examples of the impact of our activity for 2021. The group uh, lent uh, um, guarantees uh, in the in the realm of uh, 90, 950 million, 830 million of which uh, were uh, dedicated to a key initiative, the, Europe the European Guarantee Fund, set up with the involvement of 22 countries and the European Investment Bank and acted as a safeguard shield for those companies which were most affected by the pandemic. With the assistance of the Commission and a more flexible regime, of this instrument became reality in a very critical moment in time, Bulgaria being one of the countries which have uh, uh, ranked second with the largest number of net beneficiaries and about 2.7 billion euro will be um, attracted. Last year, the bank continued uh, giving support uh, to sustainable infrastructure such as the uh, Sofia airport, uh, 40 uh, million euro uh, supported under the uh, mechanism of the European Commission for linking, connecting Europe and uh, in addition to the investment activities, it's important to mention the consultancy services uh, that we've been offering, which uh, uh, are a major activity that we uh, have been performing, Bulgaria being a very active country. The European Investment Bank and the European Commission have been working together on several initiatives, one of them being uh, joint support um, to uh, to the JASPERS initiative and the European um, Consultancy um, Advisory Council partnership between the bank and the commission, uh, which is a portal to an access of a complex, complex um, package of advisory and consultancy services. And since it, has, it was set up, uh, over 120 applications were reviewed thanks to our involvement uh, the Bulgarian um, underground received uh, 450 uh, million and the bank supported uh, the underground um, with another 260 million. Uh, and now let me say a few words of what's ahead of us. The financial instruments um, through InvestEU have been around since March this year. The European Investment fund um, our uh, subsidiary uh, and the main partners of the European Commission um, have been our main uh, partners. In addition, for the the, um, the recovery and resilience facility uh, has allocated 330 million euro to SMEs, which will be uh, uh, managed uh, by the European Investment Fund. This resource will be divided into two areas, 150 million into uh, guarantee instruments uh, um, targeting the banks, uh, bringing an additional resource through the so-called so member state compartment and additional 180 million through new uh, instruments through, uh, for investments. The Bulgarian economy will have one uh, to one point five um, million until 2026 and this will be a multiplier of the of the initial financial resource three times a major difference uh, uh, from our uh, previous financial instruments uh, of 10 years ago where the focus was support to more traditional smaller businesses under the uh, initiative SME and the Jeremy, uh, the Jeremy uh, program. We have a stronger focus now on innovations, digitization, uh, green economy, cir uh, circular e economy. And this focus on innovations is, has been um, assessed as critical for Bulgaria because this will uh, bring about um, uh, six, six, um, considerable influx of private um, funding in order to 
uh, improve their competitiveness and support um, the transition to a knowledge-based economy in order to strengthen uh, Bulgaria's position as a uh, humble innovator uh, in venture capital, uh, where Bulgarian has had its um, uh, successes with innovative startups. Many other uh, economies, uh, including in Eastern Europe, have been developing uh, much faster as um, venture capital being a proportion of uh, GDP. Bulgaria ranks the last, both public and uh, private um, uh, funds uh, should uh, be increased uh, considerably and these are, this is a critical step in the right direction and last but not least it is extremely relevant uh, for the economy to start uh, the sustainable guarantee which will um, aim to encourage um, the lending of investments uh, to the energy uh, sector in order to have um, increased, accelerated transform transition to low carbon industries. This instrument uh, will be extremely important in order to, be, uh, uh, to assess and to measure the carbon footprint, which will uh, result in financing. Our door is wide open for, own, for all market uh, players and I look forward, we look forward to having more opportunities uh, uh, for discussing them. I wish you a constructive and inspiring discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Theodore. Thank you. We are coming now to our first session where my colleagues will explain you about the InvestEU program. Our first speaker is colleague Michael Feit. Michael is a policy offer, officer and director general for economic and financial affairs at the European Commission. He ha has been mainly involved in the setup and governance of this new InvestEU program. And he is also a member of the Secretariat of the InvestEU Investment Committee. Michael, over to you. Thanks a lot, uh, Ulla. Um, and uh, good morning to everybody from, from Luxembourg. So I'm based from La in Luxembourg and yes, indeed um, working on the impl implementation of InvestEU. Uh, I'm uh, yeah, chairing the secretariat of the investment committee and I'm uh, particularly happy that, that, that um, a colleague from the investment committee itself um, Svetoslava Chocheva can, can give some in, insights uh, later on, uh, in addition to, to our presentations here. So, uh, InvestEU is um, based on the experience of a, a predecessor a program called Investment Plan for Europe, FC or, or Younger Plan. It's, it's a financial instrument that was and also InvestEU is a financial instrument. That means it's not uh, providing grants, but it's, uh, it's loans, uh, investments in, in, in funds or, or guarantees. So with this uh, scheme, we are somehow uh, make the money working. So we, the Commission, um, giving a budgetary guarantee and the implementing partners giving um, further money to this. And then we um, manage or will manage to attract uh, private investments. So under FC, it was, uh, let's say, um, successful. So uh, with a budgetary guarantee of 33.5 billion, um, we supported uh, EIB group investments of um, 80 of um, uh, almost 100 billion, and which uh, generated mo mobilized investments of 525 billion. So this is a let's say a, a, a large amount, and we, we have um, supported, for example, affordable flats more than half a mil or almost half a million. We had uh, supported strongly renewable energy and also energy efficiency for, for 10 million households and, for example, uh, waste treatment, better waste treatment for, for 33 million people. Next slide, please. So FC was also um, successful in Bulgaria. So um, we, uh, we managed 
to, to mobilize uh, 4.7 billion of investments in Bulgaria. So with that, Bulgaria is number three of the among the in, invest EU member states comparing uh, to the uh, to the GDP. And um, it also uh, so it all, almost was implemented by the ELB and the EIF. Uh, together with with uh, also national financial intermediary and we we managed to support uh, nine projects infrastructure projects for a um, volume of of over 1 billion investments and um, we um for in, we, we supported many small and medium sized enterprises so 21000 and uh, triggered uh, 3.6 billion of investment, so loans and investment into funds. So uh, that that was the the predecessor. So we we think and we are we are sure that it was was successful. And the Invest EU program is the next generation of that kind of approach. Next slide, please. So yeah, here we are. So the Invest EU program are just started and going uh, until 2027 has three components. First is the fund, that's the money. Then it's the uh, technical advice, the advisory hub, and the Invest EU portal, which is a showcase to display your project if you're a project promoter. Um, so again. We want to attract private investments with this program. So uh, Mareta already mentioned, so we have immense uh, needs for, for investment in, in many sectors and uh, the InvestEU program would help there. So next slide, please. It's so, uh, uh, already mentioned, so it's part of the next generation EU together with the recovery and resilience fa facility and it helps um, let's say on the big um, challenges that we have in the moment. So the shift to the growth and uh, a green uh, a green growth and also help to support the digital sectors, strengthen EU leadership in research development, supporting small and medium sized enterprises, of course, and the startup ecosystem in, in Europe. Um, you, you know, this program was uh, designed or set up in, in the middle of the COVID crisis in 20, 2020. Now, um, yeah, we have even a larger crisis, uh, let's say, caused by the Russian invasion to Ukraine. And also here, InvestEU will help to yeah to deal with with with, uh, with the situation. So it will uh, it could help. Um, yeah, to um, help enterprises which are hit by the crisis and 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 all the the aftermath. Um, it's connected with with the let's say energy crisis. So we have just recently set up Repower EU, which should help to increase the energy efficiency, save energy, but also uh, reduce the the dependency from from Russian uh, fossil fuel. And here also Invest EU could could help. We have a large part in in renewable energy investments. And um, how should I say? I mean, above all, this war is also a, a dire human tragedy. Uh, and Invest EU also tries to help here to deal with the social consequences. Um, so helping refugees in housing project and also giving on a bit medium term uh, training training officers uh, of of us. So that means also on 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 this part on on this side on the very actual problem uh, we are about about to help there. And um, yes, we are we are up and running. So we, we, we could, let's say, in, intervene immediately with this program. Next slide, please. So the uh, just said it, that's that's uh, the, the financial arm, the Invest EU fund. So we have 26 billion of budgetary guarantee. Again, no grants, only loans, equity and guarantees. And we're going to mobilize uh, 372 billion 
across Europe at the end of the program. It's implemented by our financial partner, so the, the major one is the EIB group, EIB and EIF, um, which will implement 75% uh, of the programs, but already mentioned other, also other implementing partners uh, will, will help to implement the program. Um, we have independent investment committee, which approves the projects. Uh, and we are live since March 2022, uh, and we have uh, in the meantime uh, more than 50 op operations approved. Um, it's not just, let's say, single operations, they are framework operations, which allows to EIF to have um, sub-projects and already uh, also uh, in Bulgaria, we have many, we have dozens of sub-projects, so the EIF have a, in, in the pipeline helping uh, Bulgarian enterprises uh, there on this. So, so this this will will come will come really rather soon, and the EIF colleagues will tell you a bit more later on. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so we have four for policy windows, sustainable infrastructure, research, SMEs, and we also have a social window uh, to uh, support also the, the social points and, and deal with the social problems uh, that we have all over Europe. So this is new and we want to, let's say, direct at at least 10% uh, of the investment in this sector. So the, the colleagues from the other departments of the Commission will give you further details on, on the windows later on. Next slide, please. So the member state compartment that had already been mentioned, that's um, something important which um, helps to this EU compartment that I have mentioned with our with the central budgetary guarantee, you can um, use um, sources from the structural funds and uh, also from the recovery and resilience fa facility uh, to set up and have then um, ring fenced uh, investments for 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 Bulgaria and this will really uh, let's say. Um, increase the, the, in, the impact of, uh, of invest EU in your country. We have a first contract signed uh, with Romania and um, there are also some deals there. So with Bulgaria, it's very close. When I understand right, it will be, could be even signed this week. And then uh, this money will, will be taken um, um, by, the, um, by um, implemented uh, by the Bulgarian Development Bank alongside with the ERB ERF. So you will hear some, hear some news in the new future about that, and this will, will help to further boost the investments in, in Bulgaria. Um, just my last two slides, uh, the uh, Invest EU Advisory Hub. So I, that, that was uh, talked about the money before. So, um, but uh, also technical advice is um, is important and needed to help project promoters to structure their projects uh, financially, but also technically. And it's consisting of a of a network of advice. It's also um, um, centrally located at the European Investment Bank. And just go on this website, Invest EU Advisory Hub, and you will get further guidance. And finally, we have the InvestEU portal, which is managed, next slide please, uh, managed directly by the um, European uh, Commission, so in my unit, in fact, that's a, a showcase uh, for project promoters. If you are looking for, for private um, finance, apart from if you have EU funding or not, you, you can um, upload your project there and it's then make accessible to uh, a yeah, community of international investors or so hundreds of, of uh, investors are using uh, this, this portal. And um, yeah, we had al al also a success story. So uh, many of, of the projects find, found investors and uh, we have 1300 projects on the portal in the moment and also among them uh, also many, many from Bulgaria. So that was my part. The three main components, the fund, um, the advisory hub and the portal. Thanks a lot for your attention.
Thank you very much, Michael, for your presentation, the general presentation on the InvestEU. As Michael explained, the InvestEU has four windows, and now my four fellow colleagues from the Commission will in depth explain you these four windows. We start with Samuel Bensusin. He is policy officer at the European Commission Directorate General for Mobility and Transport, and he's responsible for EU financial instruments. Samuel, please. Thank you. Uh, morning all, quite, quite impressed by the level of attendance, so that's, uh, that's um, very good news. Um, so I'll present to you the infrastructure window. I'm from uh, DG Transport and Mobility, together with DG for Energy, we are co-chairing this window. What does that mean? That InvestEU is very much of a policy uh, driven instrument. So for each window, we have uh, chair DGs trying to coordinate the, the policy alignment of, um, of the window. Um, if we go to uh, the slide on, on the policy uh, context of um, InvestEU uh, overall, you see uh, a strong reference here is, is the 50, 50, for 55 package. So basically uh, cutting down emission by 55% um, uh, by 2030 on the way to the net zero by uh, 2050. Uh, how do we want to do this? We want to do this obviously in a fair, in a cost efficient and in a competitive way. Fair, it links back to the just transition. Competitive way, it means uh, helping businesses to grasp new opportunities coming from decarbonization. If you look at the, at, um, at the graph, uh, I mean, you can, you can see basically three main components uh, for, for all the proposals. Uh, supporting the Fit for 55. You have one element uh, on transport with alternative fuel uh, regulation, uh, fuel EU for maritime with fuel aviation. You have a component also on uh, energy, renewable energy production, energy efficiency, and then components on climate uh, and environment for bioeconomy, for CO2 emissions. So this is the overall uh, policy context uh, keeping in mind, obviously, the recent development, uh, the, the issuance of Repower EU and, and this kind of things that were mentioned um, already. Uh, if we go to the next slide, what does that mean for CIV? CIV stands for the Sustainable Infrastructure Window, so Green, Digital and Strategic. Um, one thing is that uh, it's it's part of uh, the European Green Deal, uh, the point being to, green, to bring more green investments, uh, notably here in the infrastructure sector. Um, the point of InvestEU too is to bring additionality. Additionality, thanks to InvestEU, uh, we want to bring investments that otherwise would not materialize, and we want also to do this uh, for the just transition. Um, um, a critical component for infrastructure is the green component. Um, if you look at the InvestEU program overall, climate target 30% uh, for infrastructure is 60%. So we are quite ambitious and we think it's very much um, needed. Uh, and, and these climate and environmental targets are linked to the EU taxonomy. Maybe I'll, I'll say a word when we uh, go to the product um, of InvestEU. And another component is digital and strategic. So you have deployment of future technologies, and there is also a subchapter on, on strategic investment for critical infrastructure, defense space. Uh, this is for the overall uh, policy context and overall um, yeah, background for, for the infrastructure window. If we go to the next slide, uh, we can see um, yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. If we, we can see basically which are um, the policy objectives uh, that we've set up uh, against this background and the targeted recipients. <coughs> so, as I say, uh, sustainability and decarbonization. Uh, also, a focus on, on the European cross border infrastructure, be it for energy, for transport, um, for telecom. Um, uh, and also synergies between the three sectors. Um, and then we have deployment of innovative technologies to the market. I'll come to this when presenting the, the overall product. And as I said, strategic investment. 
in terms of financial uh, recipients, we have standalone uh, corporate and special um, purpose vehicles. Again, depending on the type of, um, of financial products that I will be presenting in the next slide. Yes, next slide, please. Thanks. Um, so this gives you an overall view of uh, the financial products uh, that are deployed by uh, the EIB and the EAF for sustainable infrastructure. You have two big families, one being the debt product uh, deployed by the EIB. So you have what we call general debt. Um, there you have all the main uh, infrastructure sectors. This is where the eligibility is kind of uh, the broader for the debt product. Uh, you have obviously transport, energy, environmental resources, and also tourism, decarbonization of industry, bioeconomy. So you see it's, it's very large. Uh, we have what we brand future technologies with digital space and defense. Obviously telecom is also um, in the picture and the thing is that under the general debt we well the EIB uh, which implements it can can cope for various risk level and, and types of, of um, lenders um, aside from this we have what we call thematic product uh, please back one slide yeah thanks uh, thematic product here it's for uh, the most risky investment uh, that we see the investment that, uh, that allows to accelerate decarbonization, uh, that allows to accelerate sustainability. So you see it's high risk and high uh, policy added value. And uh, here it's really at the junction between the sustainable infrastructure window and the research and infrastructure window. So what we want to, to be sure is that you as project promoter, you don't have to go to various places or you don't end up with a project uh, being in a gap between between two support program. Uh, it's really a seamless approach uh, to support both uh, technological risk and market risks, also for small uh, new companies. So it's, it's really here to accelerate. And another thematic product, uh, that's um, PF4E, uh, that's basically a big focus on, uh, on energy efficiency, uh, which is very much on the agenda um, also in the current context and for renewable energy. So again, to, to, to accelerate and, and allow basically uh, the AB to go to, to very risky operation. So that's for the AB. Then for the AF, I'll just say a quick word because obviously it will be presented in more detail. But under the, the infrastructure window, we have the Climate and Infrastructure Fund. Uh, which is basically an equity fund with uh, also a coverage of all the main um, infrastructure sectors. And we have the sustainability uh, guarantee um, to be deployed via, via financial intermediaries. And here uh, you may have seen uh, we have supported uh, the development of the use case document which translates uh, the taxonomy and that links back to the environmental targets uh, that we have um, under the window. That's for the part of financial product. If we go to the next and last slide on advisory. Um, so you see with Investu, we really try to, to provide a comprehensive package with various products and with uh, advisory. They have for now, there are two big initiatives for uh, advisory for infrastructure under InvestEU. You have the Sustainable Infrastructure Advisory overall, which again covers uh, basically all the sectors, all the infrastructures of, of um, the window. You see them uh, noted here. Uh, there again, you see um, the ambition in terms of climate target with 40% of the assignment needed to, to contribute uh, to our climate target. Uh, and linked to this, there is ex extra budget also from the LIFE uh, program for those assignments linked uh, especially to, to environmental performance. And on the side, there is also another uh, advisory initiative called ELENA. So here the focus is on um, energy efficiency and, and renewable um, energy. So 
you see it's it's broad coverage with some extra on on the energy sector uh, the point is really to offer to businesses comprehensive support in terms of uh, their business profile, their risk profile, uh, the sectors they operate in, in the infrastructure uh, world, um, and to accompany them with, with technical assistance and advisory. That would be it uh, on my side. Thank you, Samuel, for presenting the sustainable infrastructure window. Before con con we continue, let me remind you that the whole session is um, interpreted simultaneously from Bulgarian to English and from English to Bulgarian. And you can choose on the web stream that you follow, the direct connection that you follow. Uh, bottom right, there is an audio icon where you can switch from one language to another because we just got some questions, so I wanted to clarify this. And let us now continue with the next window. Um, Evita Galliano, our colleague, Policy Officer for Social Finance at the Director General for Employment at the Commission. She and her colleagues are responsible for social investments and skills window. Evita, please, go ahead. Hello, good morning. Um, I will present to you the smaller window of um, the InvestEU uh, fund uh, with 2.8 billion in EU guarantee, but still a very important one as it covers the social dimension. Um, as you can see on the first uh, slide, um, the social window, it is framed within the principles of the European pillar of social rights. Um, the European Pillar of Social Rights has 20 key principles and rights essential for the fair um, and well-functioning labour markets and social protection systems. The action plan translates these principles into action and there we can see in the middle of the slide we have three main targets to be reached by 2030. Uh, the targets are at least 78% of the working age population to be in employment by 2030. Uh, at least 60% of all the adults should be participating in a training every year and a reduction of at least um, 15 million in the number of, of people being at poverty or social exclusion. Um, within these principles and uh, the eligible policy areas of the InvestEU regulation, uh, then we expect the biggest bulk of the investments going in the three areas that you can see uh, in the blue uh, windows um, on the slide above. So the first one is social infrastructure, following the FC investments in this area. Uh, and here we include education and training infrastructure, uh, social infrastructure and services, including affordable social housing, as well as healthcare infrastructure. I will not go into detail in this policy area, uh, as it is expected mainly to be uh, covered by direct and not intermediated financing. The second policy area is microfinance, social enterprises, social impact and innovation, continuing the successful implementation of the EASY program and the FC social impact uh, pilots. Then we have also in the middle education, training and skills, building on the FC skills uh, pilot. Uh, now the EU guarantee, it is expected will be used to guarantee both debt, equity and quasi-equity products supporting the policy policy areas um, that uh, I just mentioned. Now we will move to the next slide and I will go uh, and present uh, quickly um, the main products of the social window as agreed with the European Investment Fund that is the main partner for, uh, for our window. First, uh, you can see it is a microfinance. Um, on uh, this program, in this programming period, we increased the ticket size of um, microfinance from the 30,000 that it was before to 50,000 to reflect the increased needs um, of the sector. The objective of the microfinance is to support um, people, persons in vulnerable situations to start up or develop a microenterprise. The aim is here the social and uh, mainly the financial inclusion uh, of vulnerable groups. Microfinance is linked to the provision of non-financial services, business development services such as mentoring, coaching, training, etc. Um, this support has been proved in some cases to be even more important than the actual uh, financial support. Uh, the second condition is um, the, to sign up 
or endorse the European Code of Conduct for a microcredit provision, depending on if we speak about uh, a non-bank or a banking institution, uh, respectively. And here, the, the product is an intermediated debt uh, product. If we move to the next slide, the next policy area, it is the policy area of social enterprises. Um, we define social enterprises with their three uh, dimensions as it is defined in the ESF plus uh, regulation. The first dimension is a social impact dimension. Uh, social enterprises have measurable social positive impact and here we account also for the environmental dimension. And this impact is the primary objective. Um, profit generation comes secondary. The second dimension is the profit redistribution dimension. Profits are first and foremost used to achieve the social objectives. Third comes the governance dimension. Um, the social enterprises are managed in an entrepreneurial um, um, in, in a, sorry, in, excuse me, in an accountable, accountable and transparent manner by involving all the stakeholders. And the objective here is to support the niche market of social enterprises as it was announced in the Social Economy Action Plan. Um, here also in this programming period, we had another novelty. We increased the ticket size from 500k uh, to 2 million also um, to reflect the increased needs of the sector. Uh, and the products that are offered here are intermediate, intermediate debt and equity uh, products. Um, moving now to the next policy area, the social impact and innovation policy area. Um, this will be also supported via an intermediate equity uh, product. Uh, and here the objective is to support what we call impact-driven enterprises. Uh, the main objective of um, uh, impact-driven uh, enterprises is again the pursuit of social impact and we include also the environmental uh, dimension. And here the positive social impact comes at par with the financial risk, the financial return profile. Um, um, now, we, we, the product uh, here includes also in new innovative delivery methods, such as the social uh, outcome contracting, and the way that we define social impact is linked to the 20 principles of the European pillar of social rights that I mentioned um, earlier. Moving now to the next slide, education, training and, uh, and skills. Uh, the objective here is to promote four different types of final, of final um, beneficiaries uh, that you can see uh, in, in the slide. The first one uh, is individuals, individuals willing to undertake an eligible educational program. So here we speak about students and learners that they would like to finance themselves their studies. The second uh, possibility is uh, SMEs or entities uh, intending to finance the upskilling or reskilling of their employees. Uh, the third category is uh, entities uh, that they have the focus of their economic activity in the field of education, training and skills. Uh, and the last one is to develop the broader ecosystem uh, linked to education, training and skills. Uh, uh, here we target entities um, that provide services linked to, for example, student housing or early education um, um, and training, uh, etc. So uh, these, um, these entities may also be eligible to receive uh, a loan that would be then covered by guaranteed by the EU. And the uh, delivery mechanism here is an intermediate debt uh, product. Moving to the next slide on the capacity building uh, product, here um, we, we support with subordinated loans financial providers in the areas of microfinance, social enterprise, skills and education finance providers to build their institutional capacity through subordinated loans. And you can see the three possibilities either for organizational development and expansion or uh, strengthening the institutional uh, capabilities or the capital relief. 
And then the, the last slide is the InvestEU Advisory Hub. And here the objective is to show you that all the initiatives that I mentioned earlier are accompanied by um, advisory support for the financial intermediaries. Um, and this includes project advisory, capacity building, as well as market development and awareness raising. Um, uh, voila. So uh, this is it uh, on my side. Thanks a lot. And I'm very sorry for the background noise. Thank you. Thank you very much, Evita. Uh, now we quickly go to the next speaker because we are slightly behind the schedule. Our next speaker is my dear colleague, Albina Taneva. He's policy officer in the Access to Finance Unit, the Commission Director General for Internal Market Industry Entrepreneurship and SMEs. And she will introduce you to the SME window of the InvestEU. Albina, please. Благодаря Ула, добро утро и от мен казвам се Албена Танева. Hello, good morning. Uh, I work at the um, Access to Financing on the General Directorate Internal Market with the European Commission. Uh, our department has been responsible, among other things, with a component for SMEs under the Invest EU program. We are in charge of strategic planning, developing financial products and uh, uh, negotiations with our financial partners and monitoring of uh, the utilization of uh, the products in the course of implementation of InvestEU. I'd like to apologize uh, for uh, drawing up my presentation in English, uh, but I... The sake of good uh, I have the next slide, please. So, as Mikhail already mentioned earlier this morning, this is a very short overview of the InvestEU program. It's composed of three components. The biggest one is the InvestEU fund, uh, which is uh, guaranteeing uh, equity and debt investments uh, um, into the EU economy. We also have the advisory hub, which is uh, propo uh, proposing capacity building and technical support for project preparations, uh, amongst many other things. And also the InvestEU portal, which is meeting the um, project promoters seeking for finance and those providing this uh, uh, finance. Um, the InvestEU fund brings under one single umbrella all the EU level financial instruments that were active in the previous MFF. Um, so, for example, as regards SME support, we have the Cosme Loan Guarantee Facility or the Equity Facility for Growth. We had the Innofin SME Guarantee Facility or the Guarantee Facility for the Cultural and Creative Sectors. And all this financing now is brought together under one single umbrella for the SME window of InvestEU which will bring one single set of rules and hopefully will ease the administrative burden including different reporting obligations the need to comply with different eligibility criteria for all of you as financial intermediaries the investeu fund is uh, as you already saw um, deploying on 26 billion euros eu budgetary guarantee with the aim to mobilize private and public investments into the eu economy of uh, in the next years amounting to more than 370 billion euros 30 percent of uh, this amount needs to be at least 30 percent of this amount needs to be dedicated to climate and environmental objectives next uh, slide please can i have the next uh, slide Yeah, thank you. So uh, I would like to do some more deep dive into the SME window. Uh, as I mentioned, our unit in DigiGrow is the policy chair of uh, this window. So our overarching narrative is the SME strategy, which was adopted by the Commission in March 2020. It highlights the importance of supporting SMEs for the digital and green transition and also points to the SME window as one of the core tools to achieve this objective. Um, the creation of more integrated, well-developed and overarching EU Capital Markets Union is another objective of the SME strategy where we can contribute with financing under the SME window as well. Uh, then in May 2021, uh, we had the update of the EU industrial strategy, uh, which uh, mm, 
speaks about the need for solvency support for companies uh, hit by the COVID crisis and also the need to uh, recapitalize SMEs and again under the SME window of InvestEU as you will see later on the slides we can provide that. Next slide please. Uh, so how does uh, the InvestEU implementation work in practice? Uh, we, from the side of the European Commission, uh, conclude guarantee agreement uh, with so-called implementing partners. Our most important implementing partner is the EIB group, composed of the EIB and the EIF, um, which uh, is entitled to using 75% of the EU guarantee. In the case of the SME window, we ex work exclusively with European Investment Fund because of their mandate to support SMEs. Uh, so we conclude a guarantee agreement with uh, with EF or for the other 25%, we can have uh, international financial institutions, uh, national promotional banks, uh, as is the case for the Bulgarian Development Bank, uh, uh, for example. Um, then these institutions, on their end, they can either launch calls for expression of interest to select financial intermediaries, and these financial intermediaries can be commercial banks, uh, can be national promotional banks, uh, can be microfinance providers, equity funds, venture capital funds, uh, guarantee societies. Uh, and then uh, these, these financial intermediaries can provide uh, equity or uh, lending to SMEs and uh, small mid-caps, which are the final recipients we have under the uh, SME window. Another possibility is for the um, NPBs, uh, uh, for example, to provide uh, uh, lending directly to, to uh, SMEs without using uh, financial intermediaries. Next slide, please. So I would like to give you a very brief overview of the guarantee products we have uh, um, agreed with the European Investment Fund. As I mentioned, uh, they are our main implementing partner for the SME window. And then my EF colleagues will later on give you more practical details uh, uh, on how does it uh, uh, work. So first of all, we have uh, uh, several guarantee products uh, uh, with EF. Uh, um, the uh, SME competitiveness one to start with is basically the continuation of the Cosme Loan Guarantee Facility we had in the previous MFF. So it's meant to facilitate access to finance to SMEs. Uh, and also provide them better conditions in terms of longer maturities or lower collateral or push financial intermediaries to uh, support risky SMEs uh, that they would have not otherwise supported in the absence of the EU guarantee. Uh, a novelty uh, with InvestEU is that we have included under this product uh, a solvency support uh, instrument which is meant to help uh, uh, SMEs which were hit by the uh, COVID crisis, meaning that if they were uh, value, uh, um, uh, if they were viable companies before the, the crisis, but they have suffered more than 5% drop in the annual turnover, then they would be uh, eligible for solvency support. Uh, another instrument we have uh, with the uh, EF, which is a continuation of uh, previous uh, financial instruments, is the cultural and creative sector guarantee. Uh, it's basically a continuation of the CCS guarantee facility uh, we had before. So it's uh, meant to, to facilitate access to finance to uh, companies which are uh, active in, in, uh, in these sectors. We also have innovation and uh, digitalization guarantee product. Uh, that is the successor of the Innofin uh, uh, SMEC uh, in the old MFF. Uh, so I suppose most of you are aware that it's again facilitating access to finance to company that, uh, uh, companies that need certain innovation uh, criteria. Um, here we also have added a digitalization angle so we can support access to finance to SMEs and small mid-caps. Uh, that want to digitalize uh, their business uh, processes. 
A completely novelty product is the sustainability guarantee. Uh, it's oriented towards uh, supporting uh, uh, working capital in investments of uh, SMEs or small mid caps uh, that are already considered green, either because they have uh, registered an eco label price. Uh, um, green patent or they have um, more than 90 percent of their annual turnover in uh, uh, green activities or we can also support companies which want to transition to greener and more sustainable practices and undertake some energy efficiency uh, renewable energy investments uh, investments in circular economy in water protection biodiversity etc uh, as I mentioned, uh, our financial intermediaries here can be commercial banks, uh, can be guarantee institutions, can be leasing uh, uh, companies, uh, uh, to, just to mention the, the most common uh, ones. Next slide, please. Uh, as regards the equity products we have uh, with EF, uh, we have one joint equity product between our window and uh, the research, innovation and digitalization window, and it's composed of uh, several verticals. Uh, first of all, we want to strengthen the capital markets union, so we provide uh, uh, support for equity financing, uh, which is uh, going into hybrid uh, uh, debt equity funds, uh, growth and expansion funds. We also have a climate and environmental solutions vertical, uh, very similar to the guarantee side with the uh, sustainable guarantee products. So we, ha we have uh, on the equity side the possibility to support uh, uh, equity investments in uh, green mobility, in uh, energy solutions, uh, in decarbonization, environmental sustainability, blue economy, uh, agriculture, natural capital preservation. Um, another vertical we have uh, is equity investments in enabling sectors and technologies, uh, meaning uh, sectors which are important for the strategic autonomy of the EU, like uh, space and defense, uh, semiconductors, uh, chips, uh, very high interest we also um, observe in uh, life science and health uh, uh, equity investments. Uh, mm. Uh, under this vertical. Uh, then uh, another possibility is to, to support investments in digital and the cultural and creative sectors where we can support uh, funds investing in blockchain, uh, uh, cyber security, artificial intelligence, quantum uh, computing, etc. Uh, we have several overarching objectives uh, for the equity uh, products with EF. Uh, that is to stimulate more gender smart investments, meaning investments in more balanced uh, uh, teams and in more uh, uh, women led uh, companies. Also, support the IPOs, uh, investments in uh, countries in uh, uh, classified as modern and emerging innovators, part of which is also Bulgaria, and more scale up uh, investments into companies uh, wishing to, to expand and grow. Next slide, please. So this is the last slide I wanted to present to you, just to highlight uh, to your attention that the, our unit is also uh, responsible for the access to finance uh, website, where um, financial intermediaries uh, are encoded, uh, which have concluded guarantee agreements with uh, us uh, uh, and uh, with uh, implementing partners under InvestEU. So at the moment, uh, the site is populating with the financial intermediaries, uh, which were active uh, in the old MFF financial instruments. Uh, but uh, gradually, with uh, the advancement of the deployment of USDU, um, you will be able to find on the website which financial intermediaries have uh, agreements on, uh, with us uh, and uh, where you can actually, if you are an SME or a small mid-cap, where you can uh, go to, to ask for lending or uh, equity support. Uh, so this is that all that I wanted to present to you. I wish you a good event uh, and uh, happy to take uh, questions in the dedicated sessions. Thank you very much, Albina, for the clear presentation on the SME window. Now we are coming to the fourth InvestEU window, covering investments into research, innovation and digitization. 
I would like to introduce Rebecca de Sancha Mayoral, who works as an investment manager in the European Innovation Council and SME Executive Agency. Rebecca, please go ahead. Thank you. So I'll start with the first slide. I don't know if, if you can see it on, on the screen. Yeah, thank you. So the reason why um, we have a, a window for the research, innovation and digitization and the policy context is because we want these innovations and technologies to go to the market. And uh, we need to help uh, these uh, innovations to, to get to the market. You see from the slide where we are <clears throat> in, in terms of innovation. In, in Europe and the research and um, development investment gap. So yeah, you can you can go to this ne next slide, please. Yeah, so the pro policy priorities are four. Um, we've heard from the previous speakers and uh, very much aligned, <clears throat> as Albena was saying, with the SME window. Um, for the areas that uh, regards exactly the research and innovation window are green, digital, health and strategic. On the green, I would like to highlight energy, mobility, low carbon solutions, we are, which we know are very important uh, today with the energy transition. Also circular economy, bioeconomy, climate, some that I will mention in digital, artificial intelligence, high performance computer, cyber security, microprocessors, the Internet of Things, 5G. So we have a number of elements. It is very important also the research and innovation window in health, like vaccines and therapeutics and diagnosis, and innovating in the uh, digitizing the health and uh, healthcare systems. On the strategic part, we've heard also before, there are some elements <clears throat> similar to, to, the, to the other window, uh, which are space and defense and key enabling technologies. If, if you can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so on the general product that uh, <clears throat> regards the EIB, um, which are the objectives so to the risk investments in uh, research and innovation and to transfer those results to the market, as I was saying before. So to support fast growing innovative companies and to bring these new technologies and products and business models to, to the market. On the objectives that we were saying before, green digital health and strategic sectors. Which type of funding? As we've uh, heard before, um, they are in the in, um, way of loans, warranties, venture debt covering typically 50% of the total R&I project cost. And the final recipients, it can be standalone promoters, SMEs, startups, corporate projects, universities, tech transfer offices, higher education or research centers, also research infrastructures and innovation and digitization agencies, accelerators and incubators. If you can go to, to the next slide, please. So on the thematic products, we find under this window uh, two areas mainly, the innovation investments and the green investment facility. And then the innovation investments, we highlight uh, sectors of, regarding health, strategic digital technologies, key enabling technologies, and um, in relation to the projects with high risk and policy um, value, of course, <clears throat> according to all the policy elements that we've mentioned. So where the risk is linked to successful development of, uh, for instance, a compound, a drug or a medical device and its commercialization. And it's also important the research and development intensive solutions and technologies. On the area of green investment facility, we have sectors like energy and low carbon solutions, mobility, circular economy or uh, bioeconomy, natural capital and green infrastructure. The projects with high risk again and policy value can be, uh, for instance, early demonstration projects targeting non-mature technologies, business models or manufacturing processes with high risk uh, deployment or first phases of uh, this commercial rolling out of innovative technologies and services. If you can go to, to the next slide, please. So beyond the, um, these um, products, if it has been mentioned before in the other windows, we have advisory initiatives. And just to, to give you an idea, we have the project advisory, the capacity building or gender initiatives. Uh, on the project advisory, I would like to highlight uh, that the help of um, 
for instance, the project promoters in the preparation of investable business proposals, improving investment readiness of companies from various sectors and other entities, on the capacity building to strengthen the ability and the willingness of various financial and other intermediaries to develop and support finance projects in a specific sector for those specific activities and different types of financing. On the gender smart financing, that this is quite uh, new and it was important to include under InvestEU, is supporting and enhancing the access to finance for female-led companies and women innovators that, as we know, have very low numbers. So that's the reason why it's been included as uh, one of the elements of the advisory initiatives. And with this, yeah, I need to, to thank you and to, to give you back the the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Uh, as our colleague Michael mentioned in the general presentation on the InvestEU, there is an important body of the InvestEU governance, namely the Independent Investment Committee, which approves the use of the EU guarantee for financing and investment operations proposed by the implementing partners. And I'm extremely pleased to welcome here Svetoslava Georgieva, who is a permanent member of the InvestEU uh, investment Committee, and she's also Deputy Chair and Member of the Management Board of the Union for Private Economic Enterprise, a nationwide employers organization in Bulgaria. And Svetla, she has a vast experience in the financial sector and also in the EU institutions. So Svetla, the virtual floor is now yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ula. Thank you very much for the introduction. I switched to Bulgarian uh, for the purposes of my presentation. Hello everyone, dear colleagues, dear guests. It's a pleasure for me to be here, to be part of this event. First, I'd like to congratulate us and thank you to Ula specifically and also the whole team from the General Directorate, Internal Market and um, Enterprise of SME to organize this very important event for Bulgarian business and for all the projects that are looking for funding in Bulgaria. I would like to, I'll try to be very brief and very clear in relation to what we do in InvestEU. Uh, so, our colleagues were very detailed in the general presentation of our program. I would like to just say that my role is within the Independent Investment Committee. I'm one of the permanent members of this committee and our role is to approve projects who have been supported by the European Union guarantees we approve the granting of these guarantees who support the projects and allow for the projects to become a reality. Our investment committee was established last year, no. but as Michael mentioned already, we launched, we started this year, we started approving project in March this year and up till September we managed to approve already more than 50 projects. Um, so our activity and funding by the FSTU fund has been organized within four windows, as we mentioned, or four priority areas for financing. These are, we can see it on the next slide. Can you please turn to the next slide? These are our different parts, sustainable infrastructure, research, uh, development, innovation and digitization, small and medium enterprises, social investment and skills. Most of our projects we have, that we have supported by our guarantees already have been directed towards research and development and small and medium enterprises within these four priorities area has been organized our activities at investment committee the next slide please the next slide we will talk about management of our invest eu fund our investment fund this is our management body we meet in Luxembourg, we 
six people, his six members uh, within our board in four different configuration and each configuration approves different projects within different areas, different priority areas, for example, sustainable financing. Lisa. In this six member composition, uh, four permanent members are included within this six member composition and two experts are also, also join our board or our council. So, depending on the specific area that we are about to be discussing and our function is to approve the use of this guarantee so for each project or for each group of projects that have been presented twice by the partner banks so, apart from the investment committee the fund invest EU has also a management board the management board meets once every few months and it includes representatives of European institution, European Investment Bank, and also a few other development banks, which support this program for implementing these projects. And their functions is to manage and to monitor the implementation of the program. And what is different from the Juncker plan, for those of you who know it, is that in VestEU, we have also an advisory hub no. This advisory hub or advisory board has a very useful function and it supports the management board and the commission by giving feedback for, for the development of the program, for the funding of the project at a member state level, at a bank partner level. So there is one representative of each member state, there's one representative of each from each bank partner, as well as the European Economic and Social Committee and the Committee of Regions. And the business also can give feedback of what is really happening. Next slide, please. So, on the next slide, I will try to explain briefly how exactly we're financing and how exactly we approve different projects. Thank you very much to Albena for her presentation. And InvestEU is a guarantee which is granted by the European Union budget. It can be supplemented by the member states uh, resources as well through the national wallet. The European Commission signs took agreements with the bank partners and the European Investment Bank plays a very important role which is responsible for the implementation of the 75% of the InvestEU budget to, uh, and the plan Juncker, the, in the plan Juncker, the European Investment Bank was the only part, a partner for the implementation. Here, 25% of the budget, other bank partners will also be involved. As it was already, the Bulgarian Bank for Development, as it was clarified already, it will participate with the national wallet as well, and also other development banks in Europe and other international Funds, a finance institution, the European Bank for Development will also participate soon. They will grant funding directly, usually large funding for projects, for infrastructure projects or for large corporate projects or through intermediaries. This is usually how the European Investment Fund works through local investment, local commercial banks and through local microfinancing institution, venture capitalists, risk capital funds. They usually fund small companies, small and medium enterprises. The approval of this project happens on, at a few different levels. Of course, the bank partners, they generate a lot of projects, they analyze yeah. the projects, they do risk assessment, due, due, due diligence, of course, all these standard processes. And after that, of course, you, the investment approval comes to, to grant the guarantee. The European Commission, as it was mentioned already, right. checks the 
state projects, of course, the eligibility, eligibility of the projects according to the policies of the European Union and other regulations and conditions. Mm -hmm. After that, the bank partners present the projects before the, the investment committee of approval, and we receive a lot of documents about the financial structure of the project, about the objectives of the funding, and as a whole, why it is necessary this financial guarantee by the European budget, and why also this project can, can be very good for reaching different objectives like the object objectives for the green deal and taxonomy as well discussion is very dynamic so we exchange comments we talk to the bank partner teams that have been de developed these projects we yes. vote by majority usually so the projects are approved or rejected if four of the votes are for the project Usually the projects are approved or rejected. The next slide, please. When we grant this guarantee, we need to meet a lot of important principles. On one side, our role, as well as the role of the European Commission, is to it followed to meet the main rules and regulation of the Commission for granting this funding. For example, the rules for uh, public support, for public finances. The beneficiaries can be only economically viable or solvent uh, companies according to the international standards. The size of the funding needs to be larger than the guarantee and needs to be also larger than what it should have been given as a financing on a normal market principle. We are talking about the leverage effect here. So Two of the the important principles is that the project needs to address the market failures. They have to support the lack of financing for some of the end beneficiaries. Also, an important principle is the additionality. The principle of additionality. Can we switch to the next slide, please? According to the principle of additionality that we adhered, according to the principle of um, of uh, additionality, um, each project, when the bank partners send a proposal for financing, they should be able to prove that uh, market financing um, for such projects. Uh, could not be accomplished uh, in the same size without the European guarantee. These are high risk pr projects uh, because they, which may be in their early stage in development or in risky areas, uh, according to the market. Long term financing, for instance, 20 years span for infrastructure projects, uh, in some cases, including. Um, uh, uh, at a green uh, uh, stage, um, generally uh, providing access to financial projects which are not available uh, for certain projects. Uh, for example, projects for development of hydrogen technology, uh, maybe an example uh, uh, that we um, of projects that we support with our guarantee or in areas or in sectors uh, where there is no access to uh, methanin financing or longer term financing this uh, by means of this principle we mobilize additional private financing to back up the public uh, financing the next slide uh, you will now, I'll now show you how far we've uh, reached, although we uh, started uh, recently. The results for 2022, um, as of September, 
uh, are quite advanced. We have approved uh, 51 projects that um, have been supported uh, with guarantee or utilize uh, 175 um, billion euro uh, based on the on the budget goals for 2022 which um, take into account with the next generation uh, instrument deadline accounts for 88 percent um, of the total goal of the total target has been achieved uh, with projects um, of from the through the European um, Investment Bank and we have 115 um, uh, percent overachieving our targets uh, projects vary in the energy sector uh, sustainable infrastructure um, RES uh, energy efficiency in various sectors and industries, sustainable uh, water supply and sewerage, uh, sustainable transport, telecommunications in remote areas, educational infrastructure, as well as uh, many projects for um, SMEs and innovations, including in the, in the, in the area of education or niche uh, projects. On the left-hand side, a pie chart, you can see that 72% of the guarantee um, of uh, 7.75 billion euros um, has been a guarantee supporting SME, uh, SMEs projects, as well as projects in R&D and innovations and digitization, uh, uh, which is... Uh, uh, commendable in proportion uh, in terms of geographical distribution a lot of the of uh, the projects 33 of, the, of them are implemented in more than one country eight countries have been involved have benefited from individual projects and many more will uh, follow um, Q including in Bulgaria through intermediaries and we expect to see uh, the first uh, direct uh, beneficiaries the следващия slide and this slide um, shows some specific examples of projects uh, um, supported um, by investeu for example 80 million euro uh, euros of financing uh, from um, eib um, were um, Model. allocated to uh, building um, kindergartens and schools in uh, Finnish uh, municipalities and also bridge uh, uh, financing for RES uh, um, projects developed by small and medium-sized um, uh, entrepreneurs in uh, Spain and Portugal. 100 million euro uh, framework alone was extended by the EIB or uh, expanding the an optic network in Poland in remote areas. Uh, it has a um, significant uh, impact um, uh, for regional development. Very interesting for, uh, n strategies and niche um, investment strategies. I uh, urge you to uh, look up the InvestEU website, webpage. Uh, another example is the investment in in startup companies, in new technologies, uh, educational sector, or blue, the so-called blue economy, as well as other niche uh, strategies, you will uh, find a link uh, in the presentation which will take you uh, to these examples that you can uh, study more thoroughly. Uh, my last uh, and final slide uh, is a summary of what will follow in the next uh, couple of months very actively. As uh, stated before, um, the EIB will be involved and the EIF, uh, they will provide detailed information on uh, what uh, calls for application have been opened to for intermediaries it's glad we're glad to hear that bulgaria 
and um, the region have been uh, have registered interest in uh, applying for this type of financing. There are plenty of new instruments which were not available during the Juncker plan. Uh, plan. These are guarantee instruments, debt instruments such as the sustainable sustainability portfolio guarantee, supporting the banks. Uh, so that they could lend um, financing to companies that wish to achieve the uh, the Green Deal uh, goals, uh, uh, niche uh, areas, climate um, infra- infrastructure funds, some of which will target Bulgaria and the region. Uh, in their investment strategy, we uh, expect uh, uh, other um, bank uh, p- banking partners uh, to join in and submit their projects, uh, as including the national portfolio of Bulgaria, uh, will be started soon and will work. Um, Uh, quite actively with the Bulgarian uh, Development Bank. Uh, So much from me. Uh, My colleagues will provide uh, more detailed information later. I'll be available uh, for the Q&A session uh, later today. Thank you very much, Svetla, for very interesting insights into the Investment Committee. Uh, With this, we've just finished with the first session on the InvestEU. And I would like to thank all the speakers from the first session. And quickly, as we are slightly behind the schedule, we are moving to the next session uh, about the implementation of the InvestEU. After we learned about the governance of the force policy windows, we are now, of course, uh, eagerly awaiting our two EIF, invest, uh, European Investment Fund speakers, to go with us through their activities and how they're implementing the InvestEU. And the first speaker from the European Investment Fund is Nicolas de la vallee Poussin. He's a finance and strategy professor with 20 years of, of experience. And in his current role at the EIF, he works on the implementation of financial instruments supporting especially equity investments under the InvestEU program. And the second EIF speaker that we will welcome today is Diana Patrascu. Um, in her current role at the EIF, Diane has been working on designing and implementing financial instruments dedicated to debt financing under the new InvestEU program. And our third speaker in the same session will be Kirill Velichko, who is managing the KBC Group European Financial Instruments Competence Center and the EU-related activities at UBB. And we are very happy to hear Kirill's insights later on about how the EU financial instruments have worked on the ground. So, Nicola, you are the first one. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to present the EIF products under InvestEU. My name is Nicolas de la Vallée Poussin. I'm a senior officer in the EIF responsible for the implementation of InvestEU, and I work principally on the equity side. Um, and my colleague Diana, who will be presenting next, is focused on debt guarantees. Um, if we can move to the next slide, please. So the InvestEU fund, as you've heard, is 26.2 billion of EU guarantee in support of innovation, investment and job creation. It runs through to 2027 and aligns with the critical thematics of sustainable infrastructure and the green transition, research, innovation and the digital transition, social investment and skills and continued support for small and medium enterprises across Europe. Next slide, please. The EIF is the largest implementing partner of InvestEU with 11 billion of the total 26 billion euros to invest in its equity and debt guarantee products. The EIB group as a whole is implementing partner for three quarters of the InvestEU fund with the remainder set aside for others such as NPIs. The InvestEU product is the successor to a number of previous initiatives and so in some ways represents a simplification of our previous portfolio of products. It is a more scalable approach, uh, allowing sectorial guarantees or sectorial contributions to be added as various sectorial programs of the European Union may choose to use InvestEU uh, to achieve their aims. And it allows uh, further countries to join um, and to adopt the same rule set, making it uh, a single rule book for a large number of different initiatives. Next slide, please. The EIF supports small and medium enterprises and mid-caps across the EU through uh, a number of principal product lines. 
Um, equity investments in private equity and venture capital funds as a limited partner are the ones that I'm mainly concerned with. And debt guarantees are provided to lending institutions. So an important point to make, and this is obvious to many but not always uh, obvious to everyone, is that we provide intermediated products and we do not invest directly in final recipients or companies. So we provide products that allow us to support funds that invest in companies or that provide support to lenders by guaranteeing their debts. Next slide, please. The EIF InvestEU products are organized thematically and are in support of the key policy objectives that underpin the InvestEU fund at the EC level. Products under both the guarantee and equity product lines are aligned with the thematics you see at the top of the page. Just running through them quickly, the climate and sustainability thematic is aligned with the EU Green Deal. It supports green innovation and transformation. We have dedicated thematic uh, a dedicated thematic to support productivity and competitiveness through support for innovation and digitalization. In the equity side, we refer to this as enabling sectors. To support companies in their growth stage and in continued support of the recovery, we have the growth and competitiveness thematic. The social impact thematic is a new area of focus for the European Investment Fund and supports micro enterprises, social enterprises and other initiatives that promote skills, inclusion and education. And finally, we have a specific product to support culture and creativity with a dedicated cultural and creative sectors target area and a culture and creative guarantee product. Next slide, please. Focusing now on the equity product, we have five primary windows with over 6 billion euros to crowd in private finance and deepen and develop the market in areas aligned with the InvestEU thematics. Each of the thematics you see on the screen can be broken down into a number of specific target areas, the details of which you can find in the more detailed information available on our website, eif.org, which I suggest, which, which I highly recommend you go and look at if the products are of interest to you. Applications for investment under InvestEU equity must be made under one or more of these thematic products. I'm going to run through them quickly. From left to right, Capital Markets Union provides finance to funds that support growth companies, diversifying sources of financing for scale-ups. The Enabling Sectors thematic supports sectors that contribute to and sustain the EU's technological sovereignty in critical industries and sectors. So as an example, this would include life sciences and health, space, semiconductor chips and technologies, defense, industrial technologies such as robotics, automation, advanced materials and manufacturing technologies, and biotech. Climate and environmental solutions supports research, development, commercialization and scaling of clean technologies and environmental sustainability solutions. This includes target areas such as mobility, transport, the blue economy, agriculture, food tech, industrial decarbonization and energy. Digital and cultural and creative sectors is about strengthening the EU's digital sovereignty, supporting the digital transition and supporting culture. Its target areas include AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, education tech, distributed ledger technologies such as blockchain, and cultural and creative sectors. The social impact equity product focuses on social enterprises, skills and education, impact investing and social innovation. This very rapid overview barely scratches the surface of what, what the definitions of each of these target areas are and the things that we can support. And so again, I suggest, I highly advise you to look at the website to see the more detailed examples of what it is that we do and the more detailed descriptions of each of these areas. Next slide, please. In parallel with these vertical thematic products, InvestEU Equity has a number of, well, let's call them transversal or horizontal goals. We are able to provide a greater intensity of support to funds that align with these goals and in some cases we have specific products to support funds that are, that are in these areas. By a greater intensity of support, what I mean is that typically we will invest up to a maximum of 25% of a fund's um, fundraising round. Under these specific areas we can go beyond the 25%, sometimes quite a long way beyond it, in order to help funds that would otherwise perhaps have trouble raising their uh, target fund sizes or that are in areas of particular interest to us. So going through these quickly, um, to support scale-ups, we have the Escalar product, and that allows us to take a different class of share to other limited partners. In this case, we reduce our expected return in exchange for reduced risk. To support IPOs, we invest with a specific product under InvestEU in funds that focus on helping companies through the IPO process and supporting them after they list. We provide a greater intensity of support to funds focusing their investments in moderate or emerging innovator countries 
as defined under the European Union Innovation Scoreboard. We provide a greater intensity of support to funds that reach certain thresholds of female representation at founder, investment committee or senior management level. In addition to those you see on the screen, we have other areas where we provide more intense support, such as first-time funds or funds focusing on technology transfer. Next slide, please. Finally, our Climate and Infrastructure Funds product is focused on larger investments in climate and infrastructure, where the previous climate and environmental solutions thematic uh, focused on SMEs developing innovative solutions, so new technologies for climate. Um, this fund, this product, provides support to funds that are operational in backbone infrastructure and industrial ecosystems. Again, we scratched the surface, and I encourage you to look at the more in-depth information on our website, but that's all we have time for, and so at this point, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Diana Petrascu, who will introduce our guarantee products. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicolas. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We'll uh, go now through the uh, portfolio guarantee products that the EIF is offering under InvestEU. Um, so under InvestEU, uh, the EIF has available six thematic guarantee products. Most of them are a continuation from the previous MFF. Um, so the first one is the SME competitiveness. It's a continuation of Cosme LGF. It is focused on uh, SMEs and it boosts access to finance for higher risk SMEs. Um, it improves for improved conditions, so it, it provides for improved conditions for debt financing, such as reduced collateral, increased maturities, and it also supports new types of financing, such as the financing to startups and subordinated loans. The new entry under the SME competitiveness compared to, to COSME uh, is the fact that we have uh, under SME competitiveness the uh, solvency support instrument, which provides um, uh, for solvency and recapitalization support for SMEs affected by the COVID pandemic. Uh, um, the innovation and digitalization guarantee product, uh, it is a continuation of Innofin. Um, uh, in, it supports innovation through improved products, services, intellectual property. Um, it also supports fast growing and research and innovation intensive enterprises. Um, the innovation and digitalization guarantee product has also a, a digitalization angle, so it supports digitalization of enterprises in business models, supply chain management, uh, business development, customer relationship management. The next one is the cultural and creative sectors um, portfolio guarantee, which is a continuation of the CCS guarantee, and it provides for support uh, for debt financing in audiovisual, multimedia, visual arts, architectures, and performing uh, arts. Um, the microfinance and social guarantee is a continuation of the EASY guarantee, which is dedicated to sustainable employment and social inclusion, especially for vulnerable peer persons, and uh, social enterprises to support the active labor, uh, active labor market uh, and job creation. The skills and education guarantee is a continuation of the skills and uh, education guarantee product. It is dedicated uh, to support access to financing for students, learners, enterprises investing in the skill set um, in the skill set of their workforce. It is also dedicated to education providers and providers of additional services in, in education. Last but certainly not least is our brand new sustainability guarantee product. Uh, the sustainability guarantee product is dedicated to improve access to financing for sustainable enterprises, as well as green and sustainable investments, and enhance accessibility, which contribute to Europe's green and sustainable transition. The eligibility criteria were designed in the spirit of the EU taxonomy for sustainable finance, adapted to the specific needs of the uh, target final recipient. The criteria for the sustainability guarantee uh, were designed across uh, all six pillars of the taxonomy, namely climate change mitigation and adaptation, transition to circular economy, water resources and pollution prevention, protection and restoration of biodiversity and ecosystems, sustainable forest and agricultural practices, and also uh, having a social angle through the social accessibility investment. Next slide, please. 
Um, under InvestEU, uh, the EIF will offer two types of guarantees, so there will be capped and uncapped portfolio guarantees. You can see here a comparison between uh, our um, portfolio guarantee products and uh, how, uh, what type of um, um, characteristics they have. The novelty under InvestEU is that the financial intermediaries can apply in one go for more than one product and can elect, subject to the product and type of guarantee, uh, what uh, they want to uh, to support. The, the capped portfolio guarantee is available for all the products. Under the capped guarantee, the guarantee will cover losses incurred by the financial intermediary subject to the guarantee rate and up to a certain uh, maximum amount, which is the cap amount. Uh, the uncapped portfolio guarantee is available for uh, some of the uh, guarantee products. The uh, uncapped guarantee, the, so for the uncapped guarantee, the guarantee will cover all losses subject to the guarantee rate. The maximum guarantee rate uh, ranges between 50% in the case of SME competitiveness for higher risk one and two, and up to eight to a maximum of 80%. The guarantee fee um, is, um, so there is a new novelty is that uh, there is, uh, the EIF will charge a guarantee fee for all products, except for the social uh, and skills and education products. The guarantee fee for the, um, uh, for the capped guarantees is 20 basis points and 75 basis points for the uncapped guarantee, except for the subordinated debt where uh, the guarantee fee will be 120 basis points. Next slide, please. You can see here that we have a very diverse range of uh, uh, target final recipients based on the uh, type of on, on the guarantee product. So we have SMEs, we're supporting SMEs, we're supporting small mid caps, natural persons and housing associations, small public enterprises, uh, micro and social enterprises. Uh, generally, the, the minimum maturity for the debt financing provided is 12 months, with uh, the exception of the solvency support instrument or higher risk three, as you see, category as you see it here, where we have three years, and uh, for the micro and the social, where we have a minimum of three months. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so you have here an indication of the overall available uh, uh, financing for the financial intermediaries. So the, on the guarantee side, the biggest allocation, uh, the biggest capacity that we have is under the sustainability guarantee. Then it's followed by the innovation and digitalization and the uh, SME competitiveness. Very important to say is that under InvestEU, the EIF will also provide additional support to technical assistance and advisory services via the EIB advisory services. Next slide, please. We have launched the call for expression of interest uh, for both the guarantee and the equity products in April. We already received a significant number of application, so we encourage inter interested potential financial intermediaries to access our website in order to see the, the, the guarantee product in detail, the term sheets and the requirements for the call for expression of interest. We also have a very visual website, uh, engage.eif.org, where you can see um, uh, the, the product, the term sheet, the term sheet design and the, the characteristics of the product in a very uh, uh, user-friendly way. And you can have all the features explained there. Um, if you want, so uh, the call for expression of interest is on our website. We have it open, uh, the call for expression of an interest on, uh, up until the 30th of June, 2027. And um, for the guarantees, you can apply via a dedicated email. Um, we, we will have a, also a, a session later on uh, where we have the debt and equity uh, Q&A. So uh, our colleagues will be there to answer all your questions. And now I will hand over to, to, Kirik, to Kirill to give us the insights on implementation for the IF products in, uh, in Bulgaria. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Hello from me. My name is Kirill Vilichkov and I'm responsible for the financial tools instruments in UBB and also in the in the Belgium GBC group. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Briefly for UBB and KBC group in Bulgaria. 
But right now, we are the largest banking and insurance group on the market. What? 11 different companies are included within this group, UBB, KBC, Bank, DSAE, and other companies. You can see them there. Next slide, please. And this is the largest Belgium insurance group. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. What I can say here briefly for our experience in relation to financial tools, we have a very rich experience and these programs are very useful for our clients and you can see there the level of uh, of use of these programs within our business. Right now, we have a current exposition of 1.7 billion LEV that are covered by financial instruments. 90% of all microcredits that we grant through these financial tools and 70% of the credits for the SMEs. We also have a very good cooperation with the European Investment Bank, EIF, and all other institutions, international and national institutions, who offer this type of programs. Right now, we have also 11 programs for active including of credits with guarantees. Next slide, please. I would like to take you back a little bit in time. 11, 12 years, 2011, when in Bulgaria, one of those, one of these first programs was launching in Bulgaria, the program Jeremy, and it was very interesting because it was with the European Investment Fund, we signed this contract, and at the beginning, in the beginning, there was a very small interest for these programs, I know Jeremy was extremely uh, beneficial as parameters, but the, the market thought the grant programs were the most important. And it took us for a whole year to be able to explain to our clients and our colleagues what are the benefits of those grant programs and financial tools. And suddenly, more and more clients started coming into the bank and started asking not for credit, but asking for a Jeremy credit. And this became like a, a symbol of a, a very a symbol of a very successful product on the market. Next slide, please. In 2015, we, uh, in 2015, the European Fund for Strategic Investment appeared and the Juncker plan as well. We applied and we won the first program, the program Cosme on the market. That was the first operation in Bulgaria of Plan Juncker and it was very interesting. I remember one meeting with around 300 participants from the whole business area. We were talking about the new COSME program. People were discussing all these interesting parameters of this program. But people were not very excited about that. And at the end, someone said, oh, but we want Jeremy. But then I, we started joking, but COSME is Jeremy's sister. And this became like our narrative. And COSME became an extremely successful program that we implemented together with the European Investment Fund. Next slide, please. And until 2020, when we signed the next COSME agreement, and under COSME we have one billion of credit and we saw how our market started implementing these programs and next slide please after cosme after cosme covid 19 came and suddenly all started feeling these very big difficulties difficulties for people difficulties for economy and then the guarantee programs they played a key role in supporting banks and the business to continue Acting in this serious situation, we granted a lot of money to different companies and different entities in relation to COVID and our cooperation with the European Investment Fund.
UBB more than 10,000 company credits has, has granted already for more than 10 billion left. And next slide, please. We we're explaining about today. InvestEU, this is the new program of the European Union for supporting business through the commercial banks, including. In UBB, we applied for InvestEU. We were the first in Bulgaria to apply for InvestEU. I think we were one of the first ones in the European Union. But we will offer a few different products, similar to Inufin, similar to Cosme, green products as well. But what is interesting here in InvestEU, simply said, is that these will be credits for small and medium enterprises, but also for mid-cap enterprise, enterprises with up to 500 employees, they will have preferential conditions because we will have up to 80% guarantee on the credit. And the credit could be up to 7.5 million of credit. These are large credits, not only for small and medium enterprises, but large enterprises. They will have preferential level of compensation that will be asked by the bank. They will be good for standard deals, but also for innovative enterprises and also for green projects. And if we go to the next slide. Next slide. What I would like to summarize for our, for the role of all these financial instruments in that for us, InvestEU will be key for the development of the business and the green transition. And we expect in UBB to start our products on the InvestEU in the beginning of the next year. And I would like to use this opportunity and I'd like to say thank you to our partners from the European Commission, European Investment Bank, European Investment Fund and all international and national institutions that we collaborate use collaborate with to grant these credits for the excellent cooperation because they support business and i'd like to say that ubb will continue to be the leader in offering these preferential products for smes and also for supporting the green transition for the business thank you Thank you very much, Kirill, and of course, Diana and Nicola, uh, for sharing with us many information. Um, we will have to advance now. We are slightly late behind schedule, but we still need to introduce uh, some questions that came in into Slido. Um, and we see them now on the screen. And the first question that it's, of course, for our dear EIF colleagues is how does the call of expression of interest work? Yes. Um, so what you need to do is go onto our website, EIF.org, and um, to the right of the front page in the third column, there's uh, in InvestEU Portfolio Guarantee and Equity Products, two separate links. Under those, you will find two separate calls for expression of interest, one for the guarantee products, one for the equity products. Um, it's a standard call for expression of interest and a standard application. You can find in there the term sheet and then a lot of descriptive text and explanations about how the products are structured. Um, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the product uh, before you start going through any uh, application document because it'll help you understand what's in it. Those applications uh, are received by our front office. The front office then uh, processes them over a period of time. Um, on the equity side, the average time from an application to uh, the distribution of funds can be anything from six to nine months uh, to give time for due diligence. Um, and given the amount of amount of uh, requests in the pipeline. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory once you're on the page and our teams are always here to help you through it. Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to us if there are any questions. Thank you, Nicola. And to remind you, we will have a question and answer session uh, also during the dedicated session later on. Um, now to continue, 
of course, dear participants, you're numerous today and we hope that you found the first part interesting enough that you will continue with us. Um, and as it has been rather intense now, you all deserve a comfort break. Um, don't go away. <laughs> you can also stay behind the screens as we will be showing some interesting videos. And I suggest we resume in nine minutes, actually 11.15 local time in Sofia, 10.15 uh, uh, local time Brussels, Luxembourg. Thank you for now. Whenever you have a new idea, one of the biggest hurdles is to convince other people that it actually is a good idea. For a startup company, it's very hard to get a financing. Without the EU financial guarantee, we are dead. I don't know if it's a good, good thing, but it's totally 100% right. Without it, we would have had a hard time getting this product on the street. We are the first company in the Czech Republic that that bank ever supported as a startup company. not like a shoemaker. He can do shoes maybe for 100 years the same way. Not in our world. Innovation is the one driving force. What do you see? A little spark slowly growing bigger, lighting up the dark. Imagine what it could be. What do you see? A robot that feels sustainable fiber or software that captures the world in 3D. Wooden wind turbines, transparent solar panels, reinventing the way we use our energy. A tiny idea, so crazy it's hard to believe. An invention with the intention to change the world drastically. It's something we would love to see. So, tell us. What you need to reimagine, to reinvent the world. We can give you a place where unicorns are born. You can change your dreams, helping hands, machinery, bigger plans, or just a chance to show the world something they haven't seen. So, what do you see? Culture essentially is a catalyst that triggers a variety of positive effects in the society like innovation, free self-expression, jobs and purpose. But culture is definitely also a glue for different social groups to meet, interact and have a common purpose. In the bigger scheme of things, our vision is to use culture in service of the society. I'm Helen Siltner, the director of Shiftworks in Tallinn, Estonia. Shiftworks essentially is using creative tools and clever curation to bring positive impact in the society. And we do that mainly through the two festivals that we promote, Tallinn Music Week and Station Narva, but also other cultural events, productions and communication projects. In a way, our festivals are like a way to show a spotlight onto what is happening in the society. Italian Music Week, of course, is the biggest venture that we do in our company that takes 70% of our annual budget. And there are months when we do need bridge funding to be able to balance out the financial obligations throughout the years. So essentially what was really needed by us and what thankfully is now available due to European support measures is exactly that type of bridge funding. Unfortunately, it is not easy to get a regular loan from a bank. We wouldn't be a very attractive candidate or a client because in their eye we lack assets in its traditional sense. We don't own property, we don't have financial assets like this. And in general, I think our sector needs to be better in describing the value that we create in the society. In the end, this EU support gives us the opportunity to have peace of mind and actually do what we do the best.
Hi, my name is Fergal Ward. I'm the founder of Capri Medical. When we looked at the migraine market, we saw that it's the third most common disease. It's the seventh most debilitating disease. Uh, globally, there's one billion people who suffer from, from, from migraine. There wasn't consistent efficacy of drug treatment for chronic um, pain patients. So we looked at this and we said, we said there has to be a better solution. We were one of the first companies to be awarded um, an EIC uh, Blended Finance uh, Award. Um, so that uh, included um, uh, almost seven, 7 million euros, uh, 2.4 million euros in grant. Uh, and then 4.5 million euros in uh, EIC equity as well. We've had some great introductions into some of the investors on the portal, uh, and we continue to, um, to to communicate with those. Uh, the portal has been uh, a fantastic resource. You know, some of the. Um, providing access to uh, um, investors that you just would not have heard about. Mm -hmm. And then we've also had a direct one-on-one uh, -on -one introductions to investors from the portal and from the team as well. So that has been amazing. I'm Silvia Fluch, I'm a biologist from Ecoduna, an Austrian microalgae producing company. Ecoduna started as a very interesting project. The two founders were convinced that microalgae in future could provide biofuel to mankind. The European project was 2 million euro where co-funding had to be found in the region here. Just a year ago, we started to build the big plant. As you can imagine, with a technology like this, where everything needs to be newly established, it was not so easy to find partners. And here again, the European Commission helped us to bring 18 million euro to the green life of Ecoduna. Now we are here in a one hectare plant and will be able to produce 100 tons of dry biomass per year. So what my advice then would be to SMEs, be brave and step forward with bigger amounts and don't limit yourself by having not enough financing. Dear participants, welcome back. After the short break on EU Finance Day for Bulgaria, 
We have now two more interesting topics that we need to cover and bring it closer to you, namely the European Invention Council and the Euro Enterprise Europe Network. First, in the next 45 minutes, we are going to focus on the European Innovation Council. It is a flagship instrument which is already up and running under Horizon Europe, the current EU research framework program. And the European Innovation Council supports game-changing innovations with direct equity in investments from early stage to scale up with a budget of more than 10 billion euros. I'm very pleased to introduce you now to our next speaker, Lucia Morgante. She's an investment manager and project advisor at the European Innovation Council. And she will present to you the EIC fund with a focus especially on the EIC accelerator. Lucia, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here and for this presentation. I'm very happy to be here today with you and present to you the European Innovation Council, but also to share um, with one of our beneficiaries this panel in order to give you, uh, to present you the European Innovation Council under two different perspectives. Let me start by presenting you the European Innovation Council as uh, one of the most important uh, European uh, initiative to support innovation. In it, with a, a budget of 10 billion euros, the European Innovation Council um, aims at uh, identify but also support um, breakthrough technologies and disruptive in innovation across Europe. Uh, this instrument um, provides a unique combination uh, of a DARPA approach for visionary design research on future technologies with an accelerator to scale up innovative startups and SMEs. We will see it in more detail um, uh, analyzing the main uh, fun funding scheme of the EAC. Uh, furthermore, uh, the European Innovation Council, the EAC, is set up to become uh, the bigger uh, investors, a deep tech investor in Europe, thanks to its investment arm, the European Innovation Council Fund the largest VC deep tech in Europe with a budget of over 3 billion Euro, uh, euros. Um, the European Innovation Council has been created uh, in order to uh, build uh, a community of researchers and innovators uh, in order to shape the future of Europe, but also uh, to announce uh, the European innovation ecosystems thanks to uh, partnership with uh, other entities like the EIT, uh, ERC, but also other national uh, and regional agencies and ecosystem builders. Next slide, please. Um, the European Innovation Council um, started with a pilot phase of three years uh, and um, last year in March 2021 uh, it has been launched as a fully fledged uh, entity and as part of uh, or the Horizon Europe program and this involved also the creation of a new uh, Brussels based uh, executive agency the European Innovation Council and SME agencies uh, agency ASMEA. We can see here how um, is positioned under Horizon Europe under pillar three. Um, next slide, please. I would like um, uh, to show you the main um, feature and characteristic of the European Innovation Council uh, designed to support innovators in any field at any time and from anywhere in Europe and uh, its associated countries uh, with a particular focus on deep tech and disruptive innovation. Um, this is a mainly bottom-up instrument. This means that the majority of funding uh, will be awarded through open calls uh, with no predefined uh, thematic priorities, the EAC Open, uh, which is designed to enable support from, for any technologies and innovation cutting across different, um, different uh, technological uh, and uh, um, innovation fields. But this is mainly uh, a bottom-up bottom instrument, not only. This means uh, that we also have a challenge-driven approach. Um, uh, we um, channel part of our uh, budget uh, through the EAC Challenges Call, uh, calls, providing funding to address specific innovation breakthroughs. Uh, and these challenges uh, take into account EU priorities for transitioning to a green um, digital and healthy society. We also know uh, that 
money is important, but it is not enough. This is why we uh, um, enhance the direct financial support with a wide range of business acceleration services. These entail uh, access to coaches, access to mentoring, but also facilitating relationship, relationships and interaction uh, with um, investors. Uh, under Horizon Europe, we also set up a new uh, way of managing our projects, what we uh, call proactive management. Uh, and thanks to our program management, um, program managers um, uh, team, we provide a tailor-made follow-up of our projects. Um, next slide, please. Um, we um, are providing uh, within the AC uh, our funding through uh, three main funding schemes. Um, DAC Pathfinder, DAC Transition, DAC Accelerator. Um, DAC um, Pathfinder uh, supports uh, advanced research to develop the scientific base basis to um, underpin breakthrough technologies, while the um, transition scheme uh, is uh, supporting, is providing support to validate uh, technologies and develop business plan uh, for specific application, um, while the AC, AC accelerator is designed to um, help uh, to support companies to bring their innovation uh, to uh, the market and scale up. Uh, we can see easily um, how um, the EAC covers the um, full spectrum of innovation. Um, from the Pathfinder to the Accelerator, uh, thanks to the te technology readiness level, uh, it's, um, uh, all, the, uh, all the TRL are, are covered. The Pathfinder, namely the Pathfinder, covers TRL from one to four, uh, with uh, um, providing grant, granting uh, support of up to uh, four million euros, while uh, the transition scheme um, is uh, covering, uh, it's, it's covering the TRL from three, four to six, uh, providing uh, financing um, support with grants up to 2.5 million, while the accelerator is covering TRLs from six to nine, providing um, a unique uh, form of blended finance Com combining uh, combining grants and investments, the investments um, up to uh, 15, uh, 15 million euros. Next slide, please. Um, here, the AC Accelerator, um, I'd like to present the AC Accelerator, first of all, um, under uh, our work program. It is important, um, it is important to um, uh, tell you that our priorities and our strategic priorities and our policies are included uh, on a yearly basis in uh, a document called the work program. Uh, we already published under Horizon Europe 2 work program and this year uh, we um, uh, we have uh, we announced budget of one for the AC accelerator of 1.16 uh, billion. Um, can we move the slides, please, uh, so I can present um, the accelerator? Thanks. Um, and uh, we see that the accelerator recall um, uh, the bottom uh, recall the bottom up um, um, the, uh, the bottom up approach. Uh, the majority of funding indeed are uh, poured through um, the open calls, uh, while part of the budget is um, um, channeled through uh, the challenges. Uh, in this work program, we have two challenges, um, the Fit for 55 and Open for Strategic Autonomy. Um, and uh, we can see here that we have two, three uh, different, we had um, uh, for 2022, uh, two um, uh, main calls. These are cut-off dates. Um, uh, I, will, um, I would like to quickly um, uh, mention that the, the cut-off dates are not deadlines. You can apply uh, any time during the year for the European Innovation Council. Um, the, the application process uh, is a first. It's a four-step application. It's a it's a four-step process. And uh, we during this cut-off date, you can see here we gathered the successful application for the. Three uh, first three, for the first three steps and inviting uh, the, the, um, the, app, the successful applicants to the fourth step, which is the interviews one. Um, next slide, please. Um, the ESC accelerator um, is uh, has been designed um, uh, to 
feel a persistent and critical financial gap uh, in uh, in the European uh, technology uh, transfer market. market. Indeed, uh, despite the channeling of um, significant amount of grant funding um, uh, to research and innovation project, um, not only at European level, but also thanks to national schemes, very few operations managed to uh, attract uh, private uh, investment uh, and also to reach the commercialization and scale up stage. This is where the AC accelerator um, uh, is, um, 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 is um, acting, uh, aiming at indeed bridging uh, the valley of death of European um, uh, innovation. Uh, the AC um, the AC beneficiaries are uh, innovators, startups, and SMEs, um, with a particular focus on um, deep tech with a particular focus on deep tech and with the AC Accelerator is targeting marketing, marketing creating uh, innovation that are too high level risk for uh, traditional investors, public and private ones. Um, uh, next slide, please. Um, the European Innovation Council is supporting, um, um, is supporting the innovations thanks to um, uh, this, uh, what I mentioned as um, a unique uh, blended finance um, uh, finance scheme. Next slide, please. Um, which is uh, providing um, a combination of grants uh, and uh, uh, investment part. The grant part uh, is up to um, 15 million uh, and ranges from uh, uh, half a million to 15 million, um, um, complementing the grant, which is up to uh, 2.5 million. Um, the grant part is covering um, the innovation activities, um, or, which means basically the activities that are from TRL 5, 6 to 8, while the equity um, is uh, helping um, the, our, um, uh, our companies to uh, scale up and, to, uh, and the deployment of, the, uh, of its innovation. Uh, can we move slides, please? Um, Thanks. Uh, we also have um, a grant only and grant first uh, option here. Um, can we move slide because um uh, thanks. Uh, I would like to um, mention before the grant only and grant first, and then to uh, have a deep dive into the blended uh, scheme. Um, the grant only, um, for with the grant only, the AC is um, uh, providing um, is providing. Um, uh, finance, uh, financial um, uh, financial resources to uh, cover uh, the innovation, the research and innovation activities uh, um, till TRL 8. Uh, but our applicants must provide evidence uh, to have uh, sufficient financial means and resources to cover uh, the deployment and commercialization phase. Why? Because we do not want to provide uh, financial um, financial resources uh, to an innovation that risks to be um, to be blocked before the commercialization stage. Um, and for the grant first, um, we provide funding to innovation that requires still um, work um, to um, validate and and also or also to assess its commercial potential. This kind of innovation um, are those relatively at early stage, uh, let's say TRL 5, 6, um, but, um, but not only, but mainly. Uh, and these grant first companies are eligible, eligible for a follow-on equity component, uh, which is subject to a milestone assessment, attesting that innovation activities um, are developing um, well. And we constantly monitor um, the grant first uh, companies in order to be ready um, to proceed with the investment uh, with the investment part. Um, next slide, please. Um, um, the blended finance, uh, namely the grant component up to 2.5 million uh, is designed to um, cover the 70% of the eligible costs. Um, our projects are in average um, are activities that should be completed in 24 months. Um, and the, while the um, investment component uh, um, uh, is, takes the form of direct equity or quasi equity, namely convertible loan agreements, um, and the investment component is uh, implemented by uh, our investment investment vehicle, the EAC fund. Um, next slide, please. The European Innovation Council fund. Um, the European Innovation Council fund is. Um, 
um, is a venture capital fund. It's a fund dedicated uh, for investing, uh, investment in companies selected by the European Innovation Council Accelerator. This is uh, an alternative investment fund and the European Commission's, Commission is the only shareholder of the fund. The European Investment Bank supports the fund as investment advisor. Uh, we recently also appointed uh, an external alternative investment fund manager, uh, which is the AC uh, fund manager, managing um, uh, our making investment decision, but also managing our portfolio of companies. Um, the European Innovation Council has been incorporated in 2020 uh, in under Luxembourgish law. Uh, it's an open-ended finding aiming uh, mainly at crowding other investors. This is um, the most important feature of the AC fund because um, the investment part, uh, the, the implementation of the investment part um, is uh, designed to help uh, the scale up of um, European innovation, but also to build a large network of capital providers and strategic partners, which are suitable for co-investment and follow on funding. Um, I will be stopping here and uh, over to you Aspero to uh, continue the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lucia. I will just briefly introduce Ansparov, but also remind all the participants, as I saw a question, all the presentations will be available at the event website. So do not worry if you missed some important uh, details from Lucia's slides or any other slides before, we will publish them all. Uh, and now it's a real pleasure to welcome also Asparov Coelho. He's a co-founder and the CEO of Transmetrics. Transmetrics optimizes transport planning by combining the strengths of humans and artificial intelligence in order to ensure highest operational benefits and reduce the environmental impact of logistics. So super interesting. And Aspar is also a successful SRE entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience. Prior to Transmetrics that he will present to us now, he founded several other companies in the transport and logistics sector. Now the floor is uh, for Aspar and later we take also some questions from Slido. Thank you. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, it's my it's um, an honor to present uh, before you. Sure. So that I can start with the presentation. Transmetrics is an AI platform which redefines planning in logistics in logistics sector. It's interesting. It's an interesting case uh, study for because we uh, applied for the AIC accelerator twice uh, for a grant only first during the pilot stage. It was not clear for us that we could uh, um, apply for equity. Then when we obtained um, uh, the grant, we applied twice. So we've been uh, through the process twice, which is rare. We offer a cloud platform which digitalizes planning in logistics, which is especially designed for logistic service providers of a larger scale. The aim is to use AI, which optimizes logistics by also involving human intellect in the process. This company um, has scaled up uh, and now we have over 100,000 euros monthly uh, income. We work with large uh, clients uh, such as uh, Kuhn and Nigel, Nigel Matson, and uh, we have uh, uh, we make savings for every client. Um, and our company uh, now employs about forty people. They are mainly mathematicians, statisticians, software engineers, and logistics experts. We have a logistics uh, focus, and we plan to scale up considerably with the equity investment uh, through the uh, EU and uh, co-investment uh, from private investors, which are now which we are now contracting. Why do we need uh, to have such a company on the market? Logistics business is um, very inefficient. Uh, 
24% of the trucks, uh, uh, over 3 million of the trucks, 24% are run empty, 33% of um, sea cargo travels empty, 40% of them mm, are mm, stored um, somewhere in a, at a depot. Um, uh, three three uh, trailers uh, um, break down. Uh, these are inefficiencies which can't be resolved because some of them uh, are associated with structural issues, but improvements uh, can be uh, made and millions uh, can be saved. Um, the logistic business as well is very large. We are talking about 9.5 trillion worldwide. It consists of two sides, the shippers or consigners. These are the users of logistics services and the other ones are the carriers. The carriers are the providers of the logistics services. We are focused on the carriers market. This is a very fast market. 3.6% per, per year, faster than the economy. So things are going to become more and more serious. Next slide. Why do we focus on the market of carriers? Because they are the ones that pay for the inefficiencies, inefficiencies in the logistics. For example, imagine one truck with four shippers. Each of those shippers, they pay for the place within this truck. And for them, it is not important whether this um, truck is full or not. They're interested for their delivery to be made on time. And the, sh the carrier, they pay for all the operational expenses. And when the truck, of course, is not full, they work, they, they lose money. And this is extremely important for them to be able to optimize logistics and for the whole of the society to optimize logistics is also extremely important because when trucks are not full, of course, this means that the same quantity of products will travel, there'll be more trucks on the roads, more CO2 emissions, and of course, the price for this service which will be included with the final price of the product will lead to inflation, will lead to increased prices. These are big problems, of course, by helping the logistics. Uh, we help the whole economy to be more efficient. We help the whole economy to be more efficient. It's a large market, of course. But there are many companies, of course, and there are many companies and we cannot find one solution that will cover all. We focus on two axes specifically. The first axis is focused on the different types of uh, carrier services and the second one is the size of uh, the carriers. First are the large carriers and next is the small carriers. And our market, we focus from the small global to the large global uh, carriers. And of course, road transport, ocean transport, rail transport, this type of transport, that's where we focus. This is large market, of course, and we expect that our services, software for logistics, there will be 3.6 billion market up till 2027 for our services. And of course, we have the opportunity to expand and by using these opportunities, we will be able to take part within a market of 10, 15 billion. This is a large market. And then we don't need to really be worried that the market will be overcrowded and we are not going to be eventually capped because of this overcrowding of the market. For Transmetrics, our technology is already in use and commercializations, that is the most important aspect for us. That's why we are negotiating different equities grants to be able to finance this part. We have few elements for us. What is interesting is that clients usually stay with us for five to ten years at least. 
once they start working with transfer metrics. And this is a really good news because this means that each client is extremely valuable. And of course, for their lifetime with us, they lead to a lot of revenue, which subsequently leads to gives us stability as a company and stable future. Attracting new clients is very difficult, of course. First, because they need to be convinced about the benefits of our services. The implementation is difficult. The process of uh, selling is very long. That's why the price of expanding is very large. Attracting a client, signing a contract with a client is very expensive. That's why we need to fund the company in these directions to be able to expand the company as much as possible because it's extremely important to be able to retain clients and to retain our place on the market. And the next one. Next. And what we do exactly. Right now, the logistic companies, they plan their resources. So, uh, by using a system for transport management, they don't really offer a lot of strategic, strategic planning. They don't assess the necessity of capacity. Therefore, the data is put in Excel and manually everything's been analyzed. Everything's calculated, what is, everything is calculating, what is necessary, resources. This is a very burdensome process and it leads to many errors. And as a result, we get to the inefficiencies that, we have, that I have already mentioned. And that's why we need to replace this manual planning with an integrated AI plot platform, which will help the logistic companies. It helps focusing on logistic programs and not really focusing on Excel tables. And this leads, of course, to a very efficient planning and to very serious results and savings. In relation to the artificial intelligence, right now there is a new innovative wave in IT in terms of logistics. First, most companies already, they have good system for transport management. They generate, they generate a lot of data of what is happening. You can use data mining, you can use statistical models to be able to understand the business. And in second place, the new, the new trucks already, they have GPS, they have telemetrics, telematics. And this data accumulates, accumulates, but no one is really using it for anything. And only 10% of this data is really used. And Transocean tra uh, carriers already, they install GPS on the containers, but this GPS data is not used a lot. In the warehouses, different cameras are installed, 3D scanners are installed. This also generates a lot and a lot of data which is not used. And when we, when we include artificial intelligence, we'll be able to use the data mining and to accumulate this data, use this data, which can be very beneficial because we can forecast future inefficiencies weeks before they actually happen. And therefore, when if we know where the efficiencies lies, we'll be able to avoid them and plan them in advance. We can solve problems be before they become reality as well. We'll be able to solve problems a week before it happens. And therefore, we can avoid all those problems. And we can also find different anomalies while they're happening in real time. For example, if a truck is late, we'll be able to forecast the whole delivery. And this can happen in real time. For example, if we see a, if a truck is not on the map where it should be. And this can, of course, lead to a lot of savings in the, in the future. And of course, for us, the game is just beginning. It's very important. We don't want to replace the logistic companies because the artificial intelligence is the human intelligence with additional extras, logistic extras. 
the person can call the client, can solve different problems, they know the market, something happens, something hasn't been written in the computer and the logistic, the logistic specialist can do that. However, the logistic specialist cannot actually accumulate the data, cannot process the data, and this can be achieved by the artificial intelligence, and the artificial intelligence can generate the most correct information. For example, I can compare that to the airplanes. The, the planes, they have a system for automatic flying, and of course, this autopilot on the planes, the autopilot in the planes can fly the plane, but if there is something that is not forecasted, if there is something that is that we haven't planned for, then the human touch is extremely important. And of course, the large data, they give the key for the success of the artificial intelligence. And the more data we use, the more optimal will be our planning process. We add more and more external data to this process. Uh, and this is our very strong team. It's the foundation for our growth, logistics specialists, IT people, programmers, people who develop artificial intelligence. Our main engineering resource is in Bulgaria, which is a big advantage because we can control our expenses, and this is an advantage for us. We have a long-term strategy to work within the ecosystem and as a whole to work with the European Union in relation to financing innovations, in supporting innovations that are happening in Europe. From the very beginning of our of the existence of our company, we started working with small projects to be able to figure out how things are happening and to be able to integrate this area. And of course, when we received the EIC Accelerator Grant in 2020, this was a very big advantage for us. Then we continued with equity investment. And now we have an innovation program project which is for the last kilometers within the town for deliveries with electri elect electric vehicle and dynamic logistics. And we're really very excited to see what's gonna happen to this project with electric vehicles. What's gonna do with the money from the European Union as a whole, we would like to improve the level of maturity of our product to be able to sell it faster and attract clients faster. And then we have to focus on the commercial increase of our revenue. And as a whole, we would like to list on the B, mar on the B market, which was added to the Bulgarian Stock Exchange high technological companies are usually listed on this being market and this is our plan for the next few months to be listed there on the main market and this is our experience with the grants from the european union the eis accelerator and this was financed by the by the taxpayer and they don't ask for shares uh, for shares in the company. And therefore, there are a lot of limitations. It's only for select categories of startups within the green economy. And that's why we were approved. But many companies, because they do not fall within the European Union strategy, of course, they don't have a lot of chance to receive any funding. And because taxpayer money is used, the application process is very complicated and burdensome and the investment is very large, of course, to be able to participate. And the success rate is not very big, unfortunately. Many people, they put a lot of effort in applying and they don't receive the money. So you need to have this in mind. And when we applied, we applied a few times already, and that is not possible right now. The applications are limited to two right now. 
And after that, the company is not able to apply again for a few years if this application has been unsuccessful. That's why it's very important the application to be perfect and to be successful the first time. And of course, it is expected for the company first to use uh, to spend the money and then the money to be reimbursed. And we were able to do that because we didn't have a lot of uh, problems with financial flow, with money flow. The expenses, they have to be made. And this financing was very critical for us. So for us, my impression is extremely positive after what happened once we, we were successful. And this EIC project is very well organized, very strong. They give you a very accurate information and it was very easy for for us exactly to figure out what is required of us we never have any problems any difficulties that's why i congratulate the european union for work well done and what else i would like to say is the very strict requirements for accountancy and accountability Everything needs to be very well accounted for. And if someone decides to do this at the end of the project, it will be very difficult to fulfill and to meet these requirements. You'll need to really plan all your accountancy documentations, all your financial documentation, and you need to start working on that straight away in order to be able to have all the necessary information when the audit is being performed. Another thing, focusing on activities with low DL, DL, R, DNR. The DN, DNR, it's not really focused on commercial aspects. We had to, we, we can do really changes in the DRI, DNR project, but they cannot be very dramatic changes. So, people really need to be very clear how exactly the money needs to be invested and how is this going to be beneficial for the company because the European Union covers 70% of the expenses, the rest you need to cover. So if it's not beneficial for us, then we're going to be at a loss. Therefore, this for us, this funding was extremely important and I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity that we were given. In relation to the equity financing, we are starting this process right now. That's why it's very early to share any experience, but we are very grateful to receive this investment because uh, energies. We were a, this gave us the energy to start something that was very difficult for us before because investors, they don't like high risk in startup companies and this type of technologies could be quite risky okay. and as a whole we had to put a lot of effort so maybe it's better to apply for blended finders for the grant and the equity at the same time if possible in order to to avoid applying twice and going through the process twice my only criticism but of course this is something very normal because this equity financing is just starting right now the deadlines are not very certain right now we are doing the due diligence right now maybe we'll be able to agree on the tranche by the end of the year we have some investment planned which is a little bit slow right now which was a little bit delayed right now so this equity investment it's it validates our investment case and it helped other investors to become interested in us and it had extremely a positive impact on our company. So thank you very much for this opportunity to deliver this presentation as well and I will answer your questions if there are any questions, of course. Yeah not just insightful but really interesting and i would say exciting the journey that you're undertaking with your company and also thank you for all the insights that you provided to potential applicants the the journey that you went through uh, when applying for eu fund and it's good to to know that there is a difference that eu funds can make on the ground um 
we got a question that would be actually for Lucia, um, and I think it will be shown on the screen. Exactly, a, a question for Lucia regarding the EIC, namely, what size must the company be to get? If you can answer to this question. Yes, of course. The SE Accelerator is open is a mono beneficiary uh, instrument open to startup and SMEs. Um, therefore, this already defined the size uh, of the company. Um, in few cases, we also accept uh, uh, mid caps, uh, but with uh, a fewer size uh, means that uh, a small size means that they have to uh, get few uh, fewer than uh, 499 uh, employees. And the second one, uh, I cannot see. The second one is basically how can the EAC help businesses, businesses like the one that Ansparo has. Okay, yes, uh, thanks, uh, Ula. Um, well, as mentioned also during the presentation, we uh, augment the, the uh, direct finance support thanks to uh, the business acceleration services. These services are helping um, our companies, uh, namely um, uh, business, our beneficiaries, uh, to, um, uh, to uh, increase their network, for instance, or to have access to coaches and mentoring in order to have a tailor-made follow-up um, and uh, this also allowed the EAC to have um, a deep look uh, to, into the client's uh, needs uh, to provide support. Furthermore, um, we have also um, different services to, um, um, to provide um, uh, investors' network, to uh, enhance their investment networks, namely uh, throughout uh, a platform, a matchmaking platform, but also uh, throughout events, uh, e pitching, um, and uh, all. Uh, I really encourage uh, applicants uh, or interested. Um, uh, future beneficiaries to uh, take a look uh, to the website. Thanks. Thank you, Lucia, and thank you, Ansparo, for, for both of your presentations. And if there will be any further questions, or actually I invite online participants to do ask uh, more concrete questions later in the, um, uh, in the question and answer session in the room four, where it will be about the EIC again. And now, as we are back on time, we are basically starting with our final session of today. Uh, it will be a session about various forms of support to businesses, in particular SMEs under the single market program. One of the goals of the single market program is to strengthen the competitiveness, competitiveness of the industry and especially of SMEs. And we have two speakers in this session. Yes, I see it on the screen. Very glad to see here Daniela Chankova. She has over 20 years of experience in EU projects at both business and policy level in the field of R&D and innovation. She's a coordinator of the Enterprise Europe Network for Bulgaria, and this is why Daniel, Daniela's consultancy work relates to innovation, smart specialization strategies, SME sustainability and resilience, innovation clusters and cluster management. And our second speaker in this final session of today is Dejan Blagoyo, is managing partner of the Innovation Awards winning Bulgarian IT company Bulbera, if I pronounced it correct. He's a business developer with a proven track record of more than 20 years in the health and lifestyle sector. I'm really excited now to get all the insights from Daniela and Dejan. So, but Daniela first, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Ula. Thank you very much. Uh... I will switch into Bulgarian because uh, actually the, the main target audience for what I'm going to present is uh, are the Bulgarian companies. Dobar den. Uh, good, good afternoon. Um, Enterprise Europe Network was mentioned uh, as the, being the major instrument for support of SMEs in the EU. Uh, what uh, is the purpose of this network? Apart from lending support to competitiveness of companies, it also um, has the um, goal of uh, uh, encouraging uh, introduction of more innovations uh, and uh, scaling up businesses and entering new markets and establishing sustainable business partnerships uh, within the single European market, but also outside of it in the so-called third countries. 
It's important to know uh, that the services provided by the EEN um, are free of charge for the companies, but in exchange for that, these companies, beneficiaries, um, are required to show their uh, engagement um, in collaboration, and if they're a successful outcome at the end, uh, they should share it uh, with the other uh, uh, fellow members of the network. What are the major areas in which um, uh, our network operates? Uh, sustainability, including um, the green uh, aspect for optimizing energy efficiency of companies, uh, introducing um, uh, greener technologies, uh, reducing uh, carbon emissions um, in various manners. Another important area to mention as a priority is resilience. Uh, resilience with respect to uh, resilience to the impact of crisis. Um, uh, um, we, uh, we can discuss with uh, uh, companies uh, uh, the possibilities uh, for optimizing the, their business models or seeking new business models to uh, increase their resilience uh, to um, ha uh, hazards, uh, uh, hazardous uh, factors. Interna internationalization um, means support in um, uh, striking partnerships, innovations. The fourth area, um, it is um, joint uh, development uh, of uh, products and uh, processes um, uh, with external partners, introduction uh, to, uh, the, in, to the industry uh, uh, manufacturing or the product portfolio in order for the company to be more competitive uh, at the European uh, market. And last but not least, uh, digitalization, digital transformation, any possibilities for transformation of processes, products uh, uh, to digital ones. Uh, falls within the scope of um, EEN. Generally speaking, EEN aims to uh, facilitate um, uh, for demand and supply to meet when a Bulgarian company is in need of something, whether it uh, wishes to uh, sell its products um, uh, internationally or find a partner. Through the network, it will be able to, to to find a contractual partner to do business with. And when we, uh, it may sound a bit too general for, for some, therefore we'd like to uh, share uh, practical examples of our work and how we can be helpful. One type of services are the so-called consultancy services uh, associated with uh, the specific uh, need of a client. They, they are customized. They are not a fit-for-all uh, kind of uh, service. Uh, we first assess the needs of a company, or what um, obstacles they have, how they can internationalize their business. And we uh, use the various tools um, that the um, network avails of uh, to support. Uh, the example here given, given here is a construction company uh, in Bulgaria, which wanted to take part in public procurement um, in Germany and compete with um, uh, strong uh, companies. They, it needed a certificate uh, to do so. Uh, and with the support of um, EN and the uh, consultancy services, this company managed to obtain uh, the certificate and uh, take part in uh, tenders, uh, and not only in Germany, but in other EU countries. Another example, uh, a recent one, um, was uh, a business cluster which wanted to have an international label uh, for quality, a bronze label um, uh, granted by the European Secretarian uh, for Cluster Analysis. And with the support of EEN, um, 
um, it, it was uh, given support, uh, an assessment was uh, performed, and this cluster uh, received uh, the bronze um, label. Another example I can give uh, related to uh, finding partnerships um, internationally, a Bulgarian company manufacturing equip, uh, kitchen equipment needed to uh, to find a partner to uh, provide additional uh, film uh, that would increase the lifespan of its products. We um, sought uh, uh, our network members and found a company which uh, had a similar technology but applied in another field and they um, got together uh, and uh, uh, started uh, communicating uh, and managed to agree on adjustment of the te of this technology so that it can serve the needs of the Bulgarian company. Another recent example, a Romanian company uh, got in touch with the Bulgarian EN. Uh, it was looking for uh, certain parameters of uh, paper and we we provided seven or eight uh, potential uh, candidates uh, for contracting. Uh, the Romanian company uh, liked one of them. Uh, they uh, g got in touch and uh, now they have a joint um, uh, business. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, sorry, ne next one. One more. Yes. Um, the services uh, that we offer are uh, quite uh, quite wide uh, um, and diverse. We have a rich portfolio um, that we offer our companies um, seeking partners. They may be partners for um, for certain uh, business or innovations or for joint venture or for joint uh, project development uh, under the framework uh, programs of the EU. We also organize the so-called brokerage events B2B uh, during um, a large uh, uh, international or European uh, exhibitions or fairs and Bulgarian companies can um, participate in a hybrid format. Um, some events allow um, uh, participation physically or online. And for such B2B uh, events, we also organized uh, company uh, study tours uh, in Bulgaria and in, and in other countries when our commercial delegations um, arrive on other missions, we uh, get them in touch with uh, potential partners. Uh, innovations management, including uh, intellectual property, optimizing the cycle up to uh, reimbursement of the funds invested in the development of an innovation and move on to the next um, uh, phase of the life uh, cycle when the company starts generating profits. As far as intellectual property is concerned, uh, protecting it in what, to, in what sc scope, what specificity, what parameters are, um, are worth uh, protecting. Access to new markets, uh, I mentioned it several times, uh, to access to the single European market, but also to um, international markets outside of the EU. Uh, consultancy for sustainable development, including integration of green energy in the energy mix of uh, uh, the company including various mechanisms for enhancing energy efficiency and introducing the principles of the circular economy that can optimize uh, the uh, operational processes uh, from financial point of view included. Uh, digital transformation and uh, individual 
consultations for uh, presentation before investments, um, enhancing communication uh, skills uh, within the company, but also uh, training can be offered for several companies uh, that uh, are uh, to, uh, to make a pitch uh, before investors uh, in order to persuade the investor that their technology, their innovation is the best to invest in. Uh, EN works in a synergy with a number of other mechanisms um, of the European and schemes of European Commission, Commission, which aims to lend support to the company Erasm, Erasmus for young entrepreneurs, uh, digital uh, uh, hubs, the cluster platform, the in, for intercluster um, cooperation, and uh, Horizon Europe being the larger uh, network for financing innovations, which is supported by the so-called National Contact Persons Network. Uh, the I started my presentation uh, with the fact that EN is the largest for lending support to SMEs. It um, uh, covers five continents. Its uh, membership is dynamic because new um, countries join in uh, uh, from the from um, third countries. In Bulgaria, the EN um, has offices in, in two commercial chambers, in business clusters, uh, in the green uh, area, in RES, the RES sector digitalization, uh, industry for zero, and mechatronics and automation the Innovation Center of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, the Innovation Center in the city of Ruse, uh, Sofia Tech Park is also a member of our network as of the beginning of this year, the Innovation Center in Gabrovo, uh, the EEN is coordinated by ARC Consulting, uh, I'm, which I'm a member of uh, too. Uh, the framework programs of the EU are a major source of financing and uh, yep. Bulgarian companies um, are quite aware of that. It's a very helpful tool, but it is all, only for the, for the best. And before a company uh, gets there, it's good to um, consult uh, members from the network or other organizations um, which are active in this uh, sector in order to have a full first screening of which the most appropriate source of financing may be for the specific uh, project idea. Uh, this will enhance its chances of, uh, of success if it applies for the most appropriate source of financing. It will not waste uh, time or money if uh, it uh, approaches uh, uh, a not uh, an appropriate um, uh, source of financing. Speaking of uh, Horizon Europe and of the European uh, policy uh, in encouraging uh, SMEs uh, through various um, instruments, we should have in mind that currently the Commission uh, has structured its activities and mechanisms of support in the so-called 14 industrial clusters. These are not clusters in the sense that we, uh, the, as you, we use in Bulgaria, uh, um, being uh, legal entities. These are thematic clusters bringing together uh, economic sectors and industries uh, with a roadmap through which um, the best impact um, on the company could be achieved. It's good when a company uh, uh, mm, approaches Horizon Europe uh, to study this uh, roadmap first and the industrial cluster or, and the ecosystem. Uh, Horizon Europe is an ocean of opportunities 
and uh, what is most important is to find the most um, appropriate navigation in order to get to the to the best uh, outcome in the previous sessions of this event uh, you were given uh, helpful information on the variety of instruments available including uh, horizon europe and the european innovation council uh, what is specific um, is that it targets the most innovative companies or in individually uh, not necessarily in consortium it uh, has its peculiarities and uh, you can obtain more information about it through through us in order to um, to find your way but apart from that horizon europe uh, uh, opens uh, possibilities for participation of smes in a number of um, uh, calls for proposals and the en can help you with advice in uh, seeking partners to be included in uh, consortia that have already been set up no, no, and it is important to uh, for the company to have the capacity if it uh, develops its own project proposal it should um, develop it draft it with its own uh, capacity because the en does not uh, develop uh, projects but it can help you with consultancy with uh, with um, discussing the project proposal with proof the so-called proofreading of, uh, of a draft uh, version and uh, giving recommendations on improvement in order to have a greater chance of uh, winning um, uh, funding it was mentioned before by the previous presenters especially the european innovation council the technology readiness level it is important when an enterprise starts applying for a tender to be able to inspect the level of uh, technological readiness to see where exactly the enterprise is at the moment at what level a certain classification is being used and the european union european commission uses the trl classification as well and usually these intermediate phases are being supported before the implementation the full implementation of a process within the operation of a company we encourage the synergies with other financial tools which the European Commission manages in Brussels or for example here in Bulgaria like the different operative programs financed by the European Ford for Regional Development synergies as well with the Erasmus program for young entrepreneurs the Innovation Norway programs is also specifically on bilateral agreements between Norway and Bulgaria. It was also mentioned by Transmetrics that the deadlines the timelines are very important especially when we talk about innovations because sometimes when innovation can be very slow it can be slowly introduced to the market sometimes things are very dynamic like the it area for example so timelines timelines are extremely important so if a company approaches the horizon europe it is important to know how long it takes between applying for a tender the deadline for the application of the proposal the assessment of the proposal hopefully a positive response an invitation for financing for agreement 
until the beginning of the, the implementation actually of the project. And when the company has these timelines in mind, the company needs to decide how relevant are these timelines timelines for their project. It was mentioned already for the different types of financing. The, the grants are not the grants are not always the best type of financing. The investment can be more flexible as well. The equities can be more flexible. The blended financing also can be very useful with a grant with a component the component of using a grant as well. And the company can always receive an advice as well. The company can always address the network regardless of which office they decide to use. Yeah, uh... And you will all have access to these presentations after, but you will also find this platform for seeking for partners. You can seek partners for joint R&D project, Horizon Europe, for joint business, for example, joint development and imp implementation of innovation, innovate, deploying of innovation. Everyone who has the potential for growth, the potential for seek for partners abroad to expand their business, everyone is welcome to join the network. Of course, the network does not support the connection of Bulgarian to Bulgarian company. But if the company is searching for international partners, then this network is a good source for support and advice. Uh, e and apart from everything I've said already, it is very good to hear from some of the companies who have used the network services, Transmetrics, already they described what exactly happens in the European Innovation Council, what are the challenges, what are the specificities. So now, I would like a company to share their experience as well, a company, Bluebera, who have used the network services already. Diane, please, you have the floor now. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. It's always very difficult to be the person who separates you from your lunch. Um, but hopefully, you'll be left with a good taste in your mouth after this presentation. Who am I? My name is Diane Blagoev and one of the associates in Bluebera. We started eight years ago and we create, develop software for different companies worldwide. And five, six years ago, while we were looking for different projects, we came across the EIN network. We were working with art consulting. We've worked with different agents of uh, the network in different towns of Bulgaria, Starzakora, Sofia. For all these years, we managed to work together and achieve certain things. We we uh, received certain awards. We were declared as one of the top five companies within the area, within the region. And I wanted to tell you about our business. We heard a lot of presentations. We saw a lot of presentations. But for me, at least five years ago, all these presentations sounded very foreign. But for these five years, as you can see on the slide, we managed to visit 20 events. We managed to visit 20, around 20 events within these five years, and I would like to point out that I would like to say Danielle and her team, that they're very professional. When we started our conversations with them and explained what we were looking for, these events were recommended by them, and they just said, have a look, is this something interesting for you? And we really visited very valuable events that were specifically designed for us, 450 contacts we managed to collect, to accumulate. We talked and we, we conducted very serious conversations even with a university in Spain. But of course, 
the crisis came along, things changed, and the business changed, and of course, at the end, we came out, we, we came out with two projects, a lot of contacts, a lot of experience that is very valuable for a company, of course, and the truth is that we tried different financing companies, we tried different financing strategies, of course, if you haven't tried to apply for a grant, you have no idea what I'm talking about. And of course, we managed to get somewhere, but at the end, the money finished. And unfortunately, it happens within Europe. Even if you manage to cross the threshold, money is not guaranteed. But of course, that this taught us a lot of lessons when you start applying for financing first you need to know why you need it in bulgaria they we, we usually say oh they give this two hundred thousand. let's see what we can use it for and of course a lot of businesses right now who used to think like that don't exist anymore if you need fifty thousand pounds don't apply for two hundred thousand you need to know what you need this money for and of course i do recommend the use of a consultant unfortunately in our company we didn't have a person who knew all the details and who were able to prepare all the documentations uh, i'd like to tell you something that happened and this happened and it helped us a lot it happened four years ago what kind of software? we were developing our own product we developed software for other people but we were developing our own product in in the area of protecting children online and this was quite innovative at that time in bulgaria microsoft and google were not on the market yet so EA Network, they recommended an event in Skopje in Northern Macedonia. And there we met different people, of course, but we met two contacts and we, we're still in contact, we keep in touch. And they helped us to prepare a project to apply to receive the Excellence Award, which opened a lot of doors after that. And until two years ago, Blue Bearer was mentioned everywhere for this project, for children protection project. We had, we had 100,000 consumers. It was translated in nine languages and it was also used in Japan. We had um, customers who were choosing a Bulgarian product. Unfortunately, the big names entered the market and the small names had to withdraw. And this is an example how we, we didn't manage to achieve financing because the money finished, but EEN helped us to create a lot of contacts because right now I have contacts within the whole of Europe and right now I have my own network and for everyone who is doing their own business, they people know that contacts are extremely important. She uh, the network also recommended, I'm not sure how it was called back then, but it was something like an assessment of our innovative innovation management. How do we organize it? What is first level, second level? Where are we on the TRL level? The TRL level, the readiness level, of course, uh, it's very important to be aware of that and to know where you are. And we figured out things about ourselves, about our organizations and where we are at at the moment. And we weren't able, we wouldn't have been able to do that without the network. And Daniela mentioned some, something, all these services are for free. There are people there who are ready to help Bulgarian businesses, of course, not only Bulgarian businesses, it's a European program, but I advise everyone to use this network and if someone offers something that is free and still still offers good quality, why wouldn't you use it? And of course, we also decided to protect our brand, Bluebera, Bluebera brand, because right now it's a valuable 
uh, brand. If you Google me, if you Google Bulberry, you'll see things. And of course, we decided to protect our brand. And the experts in Daniela's organizations, they helped us to protect our quality. Whether we should protect the name, whether we should protect uh, the image, we didn't have the know-how, so they explained to us how to do it. Other things that we used as a company from a business point of view, we also upload questions on the EEN page. We upload qu queries and we uploaded uh, a little announcement on their web page that we're looking for partners to apply for certain projects and few companies got in touch with us already direct businesses contacted us but also different academies contacted us who wanted to work together well something else that was very useful for us when there is something relevant that is happening in our business, we can announce this in the EEN newsletter. For example, right now, we uploaded a newsletter about all the people, their families. This is something new for Bulgaria and for the region. And they helped us, of course, because this is... a uh, additional promoting of information another thing that's very useful for me as a partner in a company i receive up-to-date information about the different future programs what program is going to be open what will be the requirements and the second time when we applied we already had the idea we were prepared and then Things happened easier in comparison to the first time when everything was new. So right now I know in six months, for example, what it is expected. So I know I have this time limit of six months and then I decide whether I should prepare myself within these six months or not. This is a company's decision, of course, but there is a person there who inform, informs you about that and we know that the best asset is information everything else is details therefore i think that this organization really it's extremely useful i'm not recommending it though for asking for financing of course people always see the financing as the top of the iceberg but underneath there are so many other useful things that everyone can be assisted with and the last thing which I'd like to share with you and I also left it there to be very useful for all different companies how exactly to work with the EEN network first and foremost there are many teams within the EEN network choose the one that's the most useful for you, the most beneficial for you. Everyone works in a different way, offers similar services, but it's very important to have this collab collaboration between the consultants and your business because it's a long-term project. You're going to work with them long-term. That is very important to find a suitable partner. Another important thing, who are you right now to figure out? These people, they work with different businesses and it's not their job to understand your business. So you need to explain your business. And I'm sure as Baruch also explained what exactly they're doing. Therefore, keep them up to date in terms of all the changes in your business because some opportunities usually pop up and you don't know about that and maybe something very small that you've planned might lead to something larger and I'm saying that from personal experience, I've seen it. 
And of course, the last two things, when you work with someone who is advising you, listen to them. Don't think that you know everything. That's their job there. They've been trained to give, it, to give advice. They have access to information. And something that I really like to do is to experiment and to test stuff. Even if something looks not very possible to happen. So when I went, for example, to Skopje, I went there thinking about something and I came back with something that is really, really part of my portfolio right now. And it's very positive for my company. And I can say here, look at that. We train thousands of kids to know how to protect themselves online. Prosite. Because I like questions. That's why the presentation, four slides, I think it was enough, especially when you're hungry. So let's move to the questions now and let's see if there are any questions so we can answer your questions with Daniela. Thank you very much, both of you, Diane. You were now inspiring and basically you grasped the key messages that we want to pass today that yes, finance funding is important, be it that equity or grants, but what's even more important is this networking that it's all about that we will have in the breakout rooms, but also access to information, as you were saying, this is all underneath this iceberg and, and you're completely right and uh, businesses or all those watching us today in Bulgaria do profit, do use the Enterprise Europe network. Daniela is really experienced um, and do not miss these opportunities as they are for free. Diane is an example here that uh, went through the, all the phases um, and this is why I would also like now to use the opportunity of having Daniela with us on the screen um, that we can ask her questions that we got on Slido. I think my colleagues will put them now on the screen. Oh, indeed, you have even three questions now, Daniela. <laughs> so if we can just go through them and please yeah, uh, do it like you want at your speed. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Ula. Uh, so what is the likelihood of receiving grants from the EN? What is the probability of receiving financial support from the EN? It is very important to know. It's very important to know that the network does not grant grants. We don't give grants. We assist the company to understand how to receive this type of grants, to help them to receive that, this type of grants. We assist them in preparing in their application for applying for these grants, but the network does not give grants. Услугите са безплатни. Това го споменах и аз. Деян, as a user of our services, um, also can confirm that it's expected that a company should be involved in the communication with the network after uh, assessing its needs and after uh, sending a query about external partners and when there is interest registered the company should uh, respond to this uh, interest uh, it should get in contact with the company or should or may refuse because uh, the company may is not uh, is not may not be fit. Uh, it should be involved. It should not just disappear uh, or get silent. Can small startup receive support? Da, услугите ни са отворени за micro companies, SMEs. Разбира се, indeed. Sometimes we may work with larger companies, but only to the extent that uh, this interaction could be uh, helpful, could be beneficial for SMEs and micro companies. Startups usually start as a micro uh, undertakings with up to 10 people. It's important to know that the EN does not have limitations on the sector. Any company uh, that has the ambition or desire to grow, to scale up and work with international partners is welcome to the network. And as Dejan mentioned, we, are, we do not know everything. 
uh, yet the network um, encompasses um, a variety of expertise. One person may be experienced in financing under Horizon Europe or others may be very knowledgeable about uh, RES financing or digitalization or digital transformations. Others may be uh, very good at automation of manufacturing or smart management of uh, manufacturing process, etc. Uh, the EN has um, a myriad of expertise which is available for the companies. However, the company should not limit itself anything that um, it can, it may ask uh, uh, the EN is welcome. Uh, our support may not always be beneficial, um, which is uh, normal. When business negotiations are uh, conducted, they, not all of them uh, result in uh, a contract. But what the EN offers are opportunities, and this is essential. These opportunities, apart from uh, being backed up, backed by us, but they should be used proactively by the company itself. The more options are out there, the more opportunities uh, are within its radar, uh, the better uh, possibility for success. Margin. And if I may um, add, Daniela, when we applied at the beginning, when we met, we used to be a micro company of five people, if I remember correctly. Now there are 30 of us with three offices uh, in Bulgaria and in representation um, uh, in other countries. For small companies, networking is critical because most events uh, which are B2B are free of charge. I forgot to uh, emphasize that. And now when it's uh, everything is online, you can um, visit these events uh, from the comfort of your living room. And EN consultancy services are free of charge and a company in Bulgaria, uh, in Bulgaria uh, should have in mind that in Bulgaria it may cost uh, several thousand uh, levs and a proportion of the, of the, um, uh, of the project awarded may be, may has to be, may have to be allocated to the uh, consultant. Uh, but this is usually a, a, a sprint that we have to to uh, cover. You have to calculate these expenses of uh, man hours, or if you have to pay to buy equipment, it's different uh, in every sector. But uh, uh, for instance, we may have to buy a specific software to prepare or have an ISO certification. Uh, so we should have in mind not only the fee of the consultant, but uh, uh, the whole cost. And if the funding of uh, 40 to 50% will cover the whole cost and then accounting for them. So this is why I said that you should not uh, consider the 200,000 uh, out there, but have um, apply a business strategy with respect to this amount. Yes, indeed, they are. It's important to, to uh, consider the business model of the company as a whole uh, and uh, to what extent uh, what we offer, can offer um, matches uh, the needs. Uh, Daniela, I think now we are talking, now we are becoming interactive. So just please, yes, if you can say there a more. list of consulting firms to help with drafting projects who will, uh, who will pay them? What are the prices? What are the grants under some of these programs? Um, we do not have uh, such a list of consultancy uh, companies out there. We know several of them that we can uh, uh, provide you with. Uh, uh, the costs are what they offer. The prices are of what they have. Uh, they usually have a cost uh, for writing the project proposal plus a success fee, uh, which is an additional uh, markup uh, in case uh, the, uh, the project is uh, awarded uh, to uh, the companies. This is... Um, um, if I can see. Can a blockchain cryptocurrency company be consulted and can therefore... Da? 
Както казах, нямаме ограничение за сектори. Може да е в блокчейн, в криптовалути. Indeed, we have no restriction on the uh, area of business, um, smart technologies or hard technologies. Как да кажа, оборудване. Or uh, companies that manufacture equipment, no restriction there. What is important is to find who's the appropriate source of finding, where to apply for, for funding, what um, options are out there and what are the chances and to what extent the company can, um, um, can trigger it can mobilize its own resources, including time and uh, human resources, uh, um, uh, financial resources. Uh, the DEN uh, offers funding, uh, financing uh, consultancy at the medium uh, processes, but we don't draw up um, uh, projects. Covered all the questions. Thank you very thank much, you. and I also thank all the participants who are asking questions. Now there is definitely an interest, Daniela. I guess you will have lots of new customers, lots of new clients. <laughs> um, important is that you you um, uh, keep uh, with you that any type of companies are eligible to, of course, approach the Enterprise Europe network. So there is, as Daniela was explaining, uh, there is no explicit um, size that we would say yes or no, meaning any type of companies. But anyway, we are approaching now uh, towards the um, dedicated session on the question and answer. There will be four breakout rooms. If you want to know more about the Enterprise Europe network, like Daniela was now explaining, and about the four windows about the from the investeu mostly commission colleagues that was from the first session then you should uh, choose breakout room number one if you want to know more about uh, in uh, european investment fund and uh, debt products then you should choose um, room number two if you want to know more or if you're interested into equity products and uh, explanation would be provided by the european investment fund then is breakout room number three and if you want to know more, what Lucia was explaining before, and you also heard the inspiring example of from Anspruch, then it's the breakout room number four. Um, and how do you enter these breakout rooms? Either you will click on the links that you see now um, on the screen, or there is the second option that you click to on the four links that we sent you with an email earlier this morning. Or the third option is that you click on the links provided um, uh, directly on our website, the event website. Um, so this would be my motivation for you to enter these breakout rooms and to ask direct questions to the speakers. As Diane was saying before, everything is in the information and in network. So do profit of this. Um, and those who will not join us and all the speakers and all the participants, I'm now using the opportunity to warmly thank you. There has been really lots of interest in following us. Um, as said earlier, we will post all the presentations at the event website and also the recording will be available. You will get an email from us uh, sending you all the links. Um, and those also not joining us, uh, don't forget later on to fill in the questionnaire that we will send you. We can always improve and it's basically you telling us what went wrong, what was good um, or what type of information you would like to get in uh, some similar events that we might organize in the future. Um, thank you very much, participants, fellow colleagues. There is lots of colleagues who are helping at the backstage that this event was running smoothly online. And of course, thank you to the interpreters. So don't go away, enter now the breakout rooms. And thank you again. Thank you very much.